Welcome everyone to another episode of Modern Day Debate. Tonight I'm your moderator, Justin. Tonight's topic, Flat Earth versus Globe Earth. We've got William Harris debating Wits It Gets It tonight. Um, and William has volunteered to go first. So, uh, William, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Uh, everyone see my screen? All right, you see it now? Okay. My name is William Harris. I'm an engineer. My degree was in engineering physics. My specialization was in spacecraft systems. I've had many courses in orbital mechanics and spacecraft design. Um, today, we I want to explore this comparison of the predictive power between the globe model and the flat earth model. What do they predict and what do we observe in reality? The first point I wanna make has to do with the most, one of the most primitive proofs of a globe. It is the experiment from Eratosthenes. Um, essentially, the globe and the flat earth both would agree that as you go up in latitude across the earth, a shadow would increase its angle more and more as you go higher in latitude. The question is not, will it increase in angle? The question is, what trend does the increase in angle take? How much does it increase in angle over the latitude? The globe would obviously predict that at the pole, it would be a 90 degree angle. It would be an infinite shadow. But in the flat earth, it could never be a 90 degree angle. It would never be an infinite shadow, obviously. So the question is, which one do we observe in reality? Of course, the globe is correct. We see these infinite shadows all the time near the poles. Next, star movement. A globe and a flat earth model both agree that in the North Pole and point C, you would see a circular pattern of stars as they move across the sky. But when you get to the equator on a globe model, you would see, you predict, you would see stars go from east to west in a straight line across the sky. And on the south pole, you would see them go in a circular motion again, but in the opposite direction of the north pole. But in a flat earth model, you predict that on the equator, you would see not straight line of stars going across the sky, but a curve of stars going across the sky on the equator. And at the point D on the South Pole, you would still see a curve of stars going across the sky, but just more straight. So definitely not a circle pattern. Um, so the question is, which one do we observe in reality? Oh, we do observe the globe one in reality. Sounds great. So we talked about star movement. Now we talk about planet movement. So assuming we were on a globe that is orbiting a star and there are other planets orbiting the star, we would predict that we would see these other planets and observe specific type of motions from them from our point of view. A really identifiable one would be retrograde. We would see this very specific pattern that you see on the GIF on the side of my screen um, if we were in that situation, that's to say. And what would flat earthers say about planet movement? They would say, I don't know what planets are. Um, we don't know what those things are. We just lights moving across the sky. There's no way to know what they are or predict how they work or have any explanation for them. So which one has better predictive power and which one do we observe in reality? Of course, we do see planets having retrograde motion, exactly how the globe model would predict. Next. Lunar eclipses, it's crowd favorite. Um, obviously, the only object that will always project a circular shadow is a sphere. Um, and in a globe model, you would predict that you'd have lunar eclipses and those lunar eclipses would always be circular every single time. The Earth is always at a different orientation for every lunar eclipse, so it would be a circle every time, no matter what the orientation. The penumbra and the umbra would both be circular. So, And we would predict that we could pinpoint exactly when it would be observable and where exactly it would be observable down to the second. That would be predictable if we were in the globe. Now, if we're in flat Earth, what would they say about lunar eclipses? They would say, I don't know what that is. I don't need to explain what that is. There's no way to predict what they are or how they work or why they work. So which one has better predictive power? The globe does. We do predict these orbits down to the second, I might add. We do predict these eclipses down to the second um, in reality and where they're observed, obviously, as well. Constellations and the North Star. Both the globe and the flatter theory predict you will see the Polaris, the North Star, in the North Pole. But when we go to the South Pole on a globe, you would see the Southern Cross on point D and point E. But on a flat Earth model, you'd predict you maybe would see the Southern Cross on point D, but you couldn't possibly see it at point E, right? Because it's on the opposite side of the planet. So what would you see in the night sky of uh, point E? Well, 
that don't have really any explanation of what they would see um, because it would have been obvious, but we there is no explanation for it, what they see there. They can't see the Southern Cross, that's a guarantee. So which one do we observe in reality? Yes, we can see the Southern Cross at point D and point E. Flight times. So this is real flight data observed in real time from flightaware.com. I encourage everyone to go do this and test these data points live. There's thousands of them every day. Chile to New Zealand is a 12 hour flight, goes 7,000 miles. Seattle to London is a nine hour flight, it goes 6,000 miles. Um, it's not perfectly linear correlation between the time and the miles, but it's still generally uh, reasonable, especially with the currents of air that go in near Chile in the time of year. So this is what you would expect if we were on a globe. If we were on a flat earth, I can't tell you exactly the travel times they should be because on a globe, they never have a good scale on exact distances for what a flat earth map would have um, because the geometry doesn't make any sense. But you can obviously see that Chile to New Zealand would be about three times longer than Seattle to London. So is that what we see in real life? Does Chile to New Zealand have a 30 hour flight? The answer is no, the flight was 12 hours, not even close. The Coriolis effect. The globe has a Coriolis effect that dictates hemispheres on the north, sorry, hurricanes in the north hemisphere and hurricanes on the southern hemisphere will rotate in opposite directions because the equator of the globe is spinning and moving much faster and the wind is moving faster at the equator than it is at the poles. So it would be different from the north hemisphere for the south versus the south hemisphere. For a flat model, you could argue there shouldn't be a Coriolis effect, but assuming there is for some reason a Coriolis effect, it would not change between the North Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. It would be consistent for both. It'd be the exact same. Everything would be turning in the same direction for hurricanes. So the question is, which of these two do we observe in reality? Of course, we see the globe Coriolis effect in reality. Now, this is my last evidence-based um, argument. This is my favorite one. It's for gravity because it is the most observable, consistent topic in all of science ever since the beginning um, is, is just gravity. So you can observe it every single day, all day, from a micro scale to a macro scale. Micro being you throwing a ball to your friend with projectile motion or tossing a nuclear bomb from one country to another using projectile motion and gravitational equations. It can also explain the existence of an atmosphere on a ball in a vacuum because an atmosphere, although it is very, very low density, it is still made of atoms which are still have mass and mass is attracted to mass with gravity. That is the rule. So yes, the atmosphere will cling to the globe because the globe is a very massive object. That is why an atmosphere does not disperse into the into outer space. So it can predict we would have an atmosphere. It would predict we could predict the motion of the Earth around the sun and the motion of the moon around the Earth using gravity. We can predict the tides of our ocean using gravity because the tides of our ocean is a product of the gravitational pull of the moon on the liquid on the ocean of our planet. We can predict the Earth and all other planets motion in our solar system, as well as all the asteroids and comets that we see orbiting our, our star. We can predict the motion of the stars that orbit the galaxy and the motion of all the galaxies in our universe by using gravitational equations. It is the most validated concept in all of science and to deny its existence is to deny, is to, for a fish to deny the existence of water. So what is the predictability of the flat earth when it comes to something like this? Uh, nada, they don't have anything to predict this level of, uh, these level of phenomena. So I finished with my evidence-based arguments and now I wanna talk a little bit, change it up and talk about psychology. I wanna talk about the psychology of flat earth and talk about why on the world, why in the world does this theory still stick around? It cannot be because of evidence. It is not because of evidence. Because every single opportunity that it could have to prove itself true, it fails and proves the globe is true every possible time. So why could it still exist? If it's not for the evidence, then why? It is because it's about the passion behind the idea. Because the followers of Flat Earth are an extremely passionate people. Um, the followers, I, I want to characterize and profile the followers versus the leaders of Flat Earth. And, and contrast them. The followers of Flat Earth are extremely passionate people. They're insatiably cu 
they're insatiably curious. They always want to know why and the next step and the next step, why, 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 and I, that's awesome. They can also have a distrust of the scientific, of scientific institutions, and they can potentially have predispositions to believe in conspiracy and maybe have a little bit of paranoia as well. Now, let's contrast that to characteristics of flat earth leaders. Flat earth leaders are extremely charismatic and very articulate, as my friend uh, Witsit is a very charismatic and articulate man. But they are also extremely arrogant. They believe they know everything. They are intolerant of criticism, as that would project weakness to their followers. And they're exploitive of their followers. They will ask their followers to support them in their endeavors. And then we need to ask, why? What is, what is the incentive these leaders have to push misinformation that they know is false? Because these people are smart. So they know they're not pushing a good, a good faith argument. But why would they want to do that? What incentive do they have? Well, number one incentive is pure fellowship. Having people be loyal to you and follow what you say is attractive. Having attention is attractive, even if you're not following them. I'm giving him attention right now. And that's another incentive they can have. A sense of superiority over their followers. When someone listens to you, that's always nice. And of course, they can make some money along the way as well. So if you have listened to nothing I've said tonight, if you have listened to nothing, just listen to this last part. This is the part that I want to make crucially aware of. This is the most important bit. No individual understands all of science. None despite what Witsit will tell you. No individual understands it all. A astrophysicist doesn't understand everything about quantum mechanics, and a quantum mechanist doesn't know everything about astrophysics. So when you are faced with an unintuitive or unexpected fact, do not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Do not throw the universe out with a misunderstanding. Push Occam's razor to the forefront of your mind and understand it's far more reasonable that you don't have all the information rather than the model for the entire universe is wrong. And that all scientists, almost every scientist, are liars or ignorant. Um, and my last statement is flat earth leaders do not have some special power of understanding things better than everyone else. And do not, please do not fall prey to their con. Thank you. That's my time. All right. Thank you very much for that opening, uh, William. So that was right on 10 minutes or 12 minutes. Oh, talking, Good job. Uh, I'm talking, yeah. You can't hear me, William? Oh, oh, we can hear you. Oh, I can hear you now. Sorry. Okay. I was everything. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, I'm just saying that was on 12 minutes. You're good. You were worried about being over. You're just not an issue. Um, all right. So with that, uh, what's it gets it? This is your chance for your opening. So good luck. Floor is yours. All right, cool. I'm going to start a timer. All right. There was a lot there. But um, for one, I want to see if we're going to keep the same energy of Occam's razor, which is that which requires the least amount of assumptions. Uh, that, of course, is terrible for the globe model. But um, one thing I want to cover real quick that can just end this whole entire discussion, uh, it actually overlaps with the gravity thing. He said gravity is mass attracting mass, which is objectively not the case anymore. Uh, it can't be the case. The Earth quite literally cannot be a ball that orbits the sun with mass attracting mass. Newtonian mechanics can't exist. And I'm sure we'll get into that. And I don't know why people keep invoking it. But one thing I want to point out that I think is an easy way to kind of go ahead and end the conversation is we have uh, an electric field on the earth. Okay. So we have a uniform electric field. It's vertical on the earth and it's, it, you can measure the electric field, right? It has equipotential lines. They, it's a hundred volts per meter, meaning there's an equal increase of potential every hundred or every meter. It's a hundred volts, right? So there's equipotential lines within a vertical electric field on the earth and it's uniform. Okay. This is physically impossible on a sphere. You can take a conductive sphere and put it in an electric field. And because the charge is distributed radially, it will not be uniform. This is a, a fact. You cannot have a uniform electric field on a sphere. 
So the very electric field we observe on the Earth proves that the Earth is in fact not a sphere, because again, there will be spherical radial distribution of charge. What you would have is concentric circles serving as your G or equipotential surfaces or lines, and then you would not have a uniform electric field. Now, just to read Feynman here to explain it, another thing that can be measured in addition to the potential gradient that we just discussed is the current in the atmosphere. The current density is small, about 10 micro micro amps crosses each square meter parallel to the earth. The air is evidently not a perfect insulator, and because of this conductivity, a small current caused by the electric fill we have just been describing, passes from the sky down to the earth. Okay, and you can measure it. You can run a generator off of it, actually. Now, the question would be, if there's, a, if there's constantly a downward electric current on the earth, would that create a downward bias? Would downward electric pressure be caused by the downward electric current? The answer is, of course, yes. Yes, we would have a downward bias because there's always a downward electric current. To get more specific, although the electric current density in the air is only a few micro micro amps per square meter, there are very many square meters on the Earth's surface. The total electric current reaching the Earth's surface at any time is very nearly constant at 1800 amps. This current, of course, is quote unquote positive. It carries a plus charge to the Earth. We have a voltage supply of 400,000 volts with a current of 1800 amps, a power of 700 megawatts at any given time. Now, that's assuming the size of the Earth. It's actually greater than that. Um, so to kind of break this down, I hope everyone's following. People refer to the fact that things fall as gravity. That is allegedly the effect of gravity. That is little g. It is 9.8 meters per second squared. That is not gravity, as in the cause of things going down. It is things going down. You can actually solve for that with kinematic equation. You can actually uh, solve for that using Coulomb's law. There's an equivalence that has been proven in the electromagnetic nature of gravity, a paper written by Constantine Mice, who sat on the board of Nuclear Physics Institute, right? That you can actually have an equivalence with, with electrostatics. Now, important to note, everything does not fall at 9.8 meters per second squared. That is a misnomer. We People are taught everything falls at the same rate and mass attracts mass. It's a very simple layman way to explain things to people when they're younger in school. The reality is things fall at different rates. What a coincidence that the electric field creating the electric current is very nearly constant, just like the rate at which things fall. So that right there explains things falling on the earth and why there's a downward bias, why it's nearly constant, but it fluctuates. Gravimeters have proven that things fall at different rates during thunderstorms and mass and quote unquote gravity have been excluded as a possible explanation. I have all of these papers. I'll drop them as they're requested in addition in order. So that gets rid of the spherical claim. You cannot have a uniform vertical electric field with, uh, on a, with equipotential surfaces on a sphere that's physically possible. Uh, that gives you the downward electric bias that's measurable, showing things fall and change at which rate they fall based on that objectively. So now you're going to have to claim there's something additional there that you can't verify, but we can actually verify our position based on empirical evidence. Let's use Occam's razor. Remember that which requires the least amount of assumptions. So we're just going to go with the actual evidence. And also in order to have a vertical electric field with equipotential lines, you actually are going to have to have what's called a Gaussian surface. And to quickly explain that, and we can get into it, in Gauss's law, you have what's called Gaussian surfaces, and typically they're used as mathematical or hypothetical constructs. But when you're making a physical demonstration of, a, say, a, a uniform electric field, you're going to need real physical plates to serve as those surfaces, right? And they have to be parallel to each other, and they have to be perpendicular to the field. Well, on the Earth, we have a vertical electric field. So what is perpendicular to vertical? It is, of course, horizontal. So in order to have the actual equipotential electric field we have, there has to be some type of containment above us. It has to be parallel to the surface, and it has to actually be horizontal. And this is just facts. So that argument right there, that fact alone, gets rid of the spherical geometry claim. It gets rid of the quote-unquote gravity claim, and it gets rid of the we live in uh, a ball, I live on a ball in a vacuum claim. Okay, that's six minutes, and we can get into that. And again, this is uh, Feynman Lectures. It's uh, 9.1, I believe, and it's about atmospheric electricity. You can check it. You can check the measurements yourself. You can go out and verify yourself, and you can run um, generators off of it. So for the last few minutes, what I'm going to do is cover a couple things that he said. Retrograde motion 
is not exclusive to the Earth orbiting the sun. In fact, in order to think that it was, you would have to not believe in the current model, which uses relativity and actually says there's a kinematic equi equivalence between a geocentric stationary position and a heliocentric model, meaning all planetary motion, all geometric patterns are equivalent in both models. They're equally valid. Einstein will tell you this point blank in all of his papers. He said it. So there's kinematics, how bodies move in relation to each other. And there's dynamics, which is the supposed force that causes them to move that way. Okay. Gravity would be the claim dynamics. And then kinematics is just how they move. Retrograde would be a kinematic observation, right? The planets look like they go backwards. Now, of course, on a stationary earth, there are multiple explanations. One of which is we measure the planets in relation to the background stars. So if the planets were to actually just slow down, on occasion, they would look from our perspective to be going backwards in relation to the background stars. There's a much more popular one that's been known about for a long time, which comes from the Tychonic system. That's Tycho Brahe, which is where Kepler and everyone even got their data in the first place, right? And Tycho Brahe, or a Neo-Tychonic system, would say that the planets move around the sun as that entire system moves around the Earth. Then you would have the exact same explanation that a heliocentric model has, which is it looks like they're going backwards because they're moving in relation to the sun, right? And then you have internal planets, et cetera. So there's a kinematic equivalence with retrograde that isn't exclusive to the Earth um, flying around the sun whatsoever. And in fact, the Mercury's perihelion shift shows you that their model doesn't even work. Gravity doesn't even work. And it still hasn't been explained to this day. Okay, and we'll get more into this stuff, hopefully. But lunar eclipses, he said that the only shape that can have that is a sphere. You can, of course, put anything in front of something that's taking some type of spherical shape, which could be plasma. If you look at light from a distance, it looks like a sphere, right? It has a radius of light. So any light source from a distance is going to look like a sphere because it has a radius of light, right? Illumination. Same with the planets and everything. But that aside, you could take uh, a cylinder and move it in front of the moon and it would create a circular shadow. This has been replicated many times. If you've never heard of it, you may sound unfamiliar to you, but it is a fact. You can take any shape and move it in front of it and cause a circular shadow. And actually lunar eclipses debunk the globe as we have selenillion eclipses where the sun and the moon are both above the earth during the eclipse when supposedly the earth is blocking the light from the sun casting a shadow onto the moon which is a geometric impossibility this is another time where we'll throw occam's razor out i'm sure because occam's razor is the globe's worst enemy north star cannot be seen from super far south that's correct because you can't see forever on a flat earth and whenever all these things were called predictions from the globe they're actually just we looked at the sky we recorded it over hundreds or even thousands of years and then we crafted a globe earth model based on the celestial observations that's quite Quite literally how we made it so that would be the opposite of prediction that would quite literally be the opposite so if you say hey look i'm going to look at all the sky and then make up a model in my head of the earth being a globe then i'm going to say hey look the globe predicts what happens in the sky that is hilariously backwards awesome. i still got a couple minutes so that is post-diction not prediction and uh, actually, we can see Polaris below the equator at times, which is also a geometric impossibility on the globe. And this is where Occam's razor will get thrown out again, and they'll start making excuses, uh, special pleading, post hoc rationalization, et cetera. Flight times actually use GPS, which use a preferred direction. They make meridian corrections. So in the south, they use GPS to get the distances. They use they make meridian corrections, actually subtracting distances over 69 miles and accounting for the preferred direction of C. Actually, the variant nature of C. I hope we get into that right? If that's what he specializes in. And then of course, like I said, gravity is not mass attracting mass. That's archaic. So for the last minute and a half, I'm going to explain this. Most people that claim that the earth's a globe that flies around the sun, they all bring up Newton, the mass attracting mass. You cannot believe in Newtonian mechanics and the heliocentric model at the same time. This is a fact because the Michelson-Morley experiment did not detect the orbit of the earth. And if there's a force acting on the earth that caused it to go into a circular motion, you would detect that circular motion with interferometry. That's what the Sagnac effect is. We did not detect the orbit. Einstein came in and saved the day by saying, oh, well, actually the earth is free falling in a linear path in the curvature of space time in a geodesic path. That's why you couldn't detect it, which means Quite literally, either you pick Newtonian mechanics or the Earth is orbiting around the sun. You cannot have both. And in fact, if you do anything with orbital mechanics or aerospace engineering or anything like that, they use Newtonian mechanics. So if that were to even be true, which actually you treat it as an ellipse from our position, that would be evidence for a stationary Earth, quite literally, because if the Newtonian mechanics was true, the Earth cannot be orbiting around the sun. 
So it's very perplexing as to why people bring that up. Of course, also, it doesn't have a time variable. Gravity would have to be instant. You would have to have instantaneous action at a distance, just like Newton said. He didn't even propose a cause. He said it must be God doing it, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a, I know that that was a lot. I try not to go too fast. We can get more into the specifics, but Occam's razor is in the last 10 seconds, obviously that the earth is a stationary topographical plane and that the earth is in the center of the cosmos. Everything moves around us for all recorded history. You have to actually make tons of assumptions to explain how those are all illusions. Cool. Well timed, Witsit. Thank you very much, both of you, for your opening statements. Allow me to uh, just welcome our viewers at over 800 strong tonight. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. This is a fantastic showing. It's always exciting to have uh, great debates going on tonight. Flat Earth versus Globe. Now, if you think you have what it takes for making a case, whether it be for Flat Earth, Globe Earth, pinned in the top of our chat tonight is James's direct email. So why don't you let him know what you think you can do um, to strengthen the claim of flat earth or globe earth or any topic you think you might be qualified to defend um, we're actively searching out for new presenters here on the channel so now's your opportunity if you ever thought maybe you could do something about it the other thing i want to draw attention to is we are this close from rounding 170 thousand subscribers on modern day debate we've got over 800 people watching I would love to assume you were all subscribers right now, but chances are you're probably not. So why don't you go ahead, hit that subscribe button. If nothing else, just so we can see that digit roll over it would be a wicked, wicked thing to see tonight. A huge feather in my cap, actually. If I could turn to James and go see what happens when I mod, we roll over subs, bro. You know? Um, yeah, we're about to head into our opening statements. I already have a slew of super chats. If you have questions for our debaters, uh, keep them respectful, but uh, by all means, send over a super chat and we will read them at the end of the open discussion. Gentlemen, we can start the open discussion now. I'll sit here and stay out of your way unless you guys start to dogpile. Keep it respectful. Have fun. Oh, so uh, thank you, Justin. Um, so uh, what's it? do you believe Newtonian mechanics is true? No. Okay, that's correct. What do you know? Why it's not true, and what it why it is useful though still. Um, I don't care if it's useful. It's not true. And I didn't paradigm. say it was true either. Why so is it useful? What, uh, because it's really easy to use and simple to use, and we can use it for things on the Earth that I can use like ten other different equations for. Mm -hmm. Because it's made good at predicting the future, right? On our small scale. Oh no. You disagree? No. Yeah. no. So, so mm -hmm. it doesn't uh, work on the projectile small. motion. Is a kinematic equation from Newtonian physics? Do you think okay. projectile motion is good at predicting things? Uh, yeah, sure. We make predictions. Okay, with... so you do think it's good to making predictions, Newtonian you... physics? Yeah, I just said it can. So you make contradicted some... yourself already. So now predictions. All right, what's what is not going to happen is that can you're you going to interrupt me when I'm responding. So you can calm down. You're not tough. All right. So I already acknowledged that it does make some predictions, okay? Duh. So it does make predictions. Duh. But the point is that it doesn't work even on the earthly scale. There are places it doesn't work on the local terrestrial scale. I agree. Doesn't work at all on the quantum scale. Doesn't work on the solar system scale. And totally doesn't work on the cosmological scale. I can show you. I need you to pay attention to this. I can give you another equation that does the same thing, and it uses an electrostatic equivalence. Therefore, if our only standard of if it's good or not is if it can make some predictions, then that one's equally valid. We don't even need Newtonian mechanics. So if it did make a prediction, would that mean it's true? If your equation that you came up with, would that mean it's true? No. Correct. So you believe Newtonian right, you got physics it. is you believe Newtonian physics is very useful and good at making predictions. But wrong. So, but it's wrong, so though. What about predictions? I, I know you talked about this, and I hate to get into semantical arguments, but a prediction, <laughs> can you make a prediction based on past data? What's it? Uh, yeah, sure. If it's a cyclical, if it's a cyclical gotcha. thing, it's not actually, if it's cyclical, it's not actually a prediction. Mm -hmm. So why? It's just an acknowledgement of a cycle. If you want right. to be semantic and call it a prediction, that's cool. It does. It doesn't. Okay. You can't tout it as predictive capability. It was cyclical. The Antikythera mechanism predicts everything that happens in the sky. It doesn't use any type of dynamics whatsoever. 
Okay, so it can make predictions. Thank you. You see um, how you're so gonna have to be disingenuous. No, you wrong. said it makes predictions. You said <laughs> no. I said it's actually cyclical, so it's a post diction. It's called. Can a you make a prediction with it? No, it's. It, we actually have a technical name for it. It's called post diction. It's literally what it's called. Is it telling the future? I don't care what you call it. Is it telling the future? No, it's Are just it's acknowledging a presumption of the cycle that we've currently observed to that point. So if you saw but, a cycle 10,000 times and you are assuming it in the future, it will happen again. Is that what you're talking about? Right. So then that wouldn't add any gotcha. validity. That wouldn't add any validity to or like that wouldn't show us that something's valid just because we applied an equation to show us that the cycle is going to keep happening, which mm -hmm. was your argument. Your argument so, was since so, it matches so, the so, cycle, it proves the globe. It literally doesn't. So it can be used to tell the future, which is what you denied initially in this argument. No, we can acknowledge the cycle. Sure. And we can, can tell the future. The cycle. We can assume the cycle is going to keep happening. That doesn't actually. So give validity admit it can tell the future. You not understand the simplicity in what I'm saying? You just have cognitive dissonance and don't project, don't pretend. It's so obvious. To, hey, you can tell the future with it. That's what you, you said. Do, do you agree that that doesn't show that something's valid if the cycle's going to happen anyway, and then you just create something that uh, absorbs the cycle that doesn't add validity to the claim? No, it, it does not prove it's true, but it definitely proves that you can use predictions. It does have, definitely has predictive power. What do we predict with it? Did you listen to my intro? It's not a prediction if I, I already know it's going to happen. I showed you different dude. examples of predictions that the globe Earth can predict that the flat Earth model cannot. So it has predictive power. Would you agree? If something can tell the future, it has predictive power. Would you agree with that at least? It's not telling the future. We just already see the cycle, right? So, so, so sure, if you, if you want to be semantic and say like, oh, well... The, dude, this is so this is so ignorant. No, I want to stay on this topic actually a little bit because I know you well, just why, hate why this are you, why are you so much. Because I want to acknowledge that you feeling uncomfortable because you're about to admit. I'm you're not wrong uncomfortable. About this is I I consider this. Can you tell the future with it? Um, if that makes you happy, sure. Okay, so thank you. So you contradict yourself well, it, again. Well, you can also tell the future without it. Okay, and so here's the important part: it's a cycle that happens always, forever. You can tell the future completely without the globe model. We looked at the sky and we saw that it keeps doing the same thing forever for all recorded history, which is actually a new problem, as you claim compounding vectors that we can just ignore. So then you made a globe model based on the cycle always happening and it took many hundreds of years to make it by the way you had to keep on adding wobbles here and there and just constantly making stuff up to even make it match the cycles that we see now people turn around in 2024 and claim that because it matches the sky it actually proves it's correct when you literally made it from the sky cycle in the first place that is ignorant Right. So that is called deductive reasoning. And I know you're very unfamiliar with that concept, but it's called looking at past data points and fitting a curve, fitting a trend to them and trying to make a reasonable argument for that trend's existence. So that is called using data. To predict cool. Let's the future. Hey, wait, wait. You but before you move on, true. you're this interrupting me. I just again. want to make a point. This again actually isn't just you going you. down a what, list. Can you not control yourself? All no, right. no. You're just this dude's like acting like I'm minutes. here in his classroom or something. Yep. I'm not. I, I understand. I understand. I'm trying to educate you. That's nice projection. We're about to we're about to stick on Newtonian mechanics though, and we're gonna get educated. Why you, you don't can't believe in Newtonian it. mechanics? You're gonna you can't use Newtonian mechanics. So let's talk about how Newtonian mechanics was disproven with Michelson Morley. Can you explain how that? Happened? I acknowledge Newtonian mechanics is false. I don't have to answer this. Okay, so then now, you back to the th other so, so then wait wait that so we've wait, already, wait, we've been past this. What are you talking about? So we're then why, done. why do this you invoke it? Then why you do you invoke about? it? Info because it's useful, as I said, something can be useful and be wrong at the same time. That is the argument I'm making. Okay, okay. so then gravity isn't mass attracting mass like you claimed in your opener. Then it is mass attracting mass. It literally no, is. Oh, you did say this. Does a massive object attract another massive object? No. No. So what happens when something is pulled towards each other? What do you call that? Okay, well, it's not pulled towards each other in your paradigm. I'll happily mm -hmm. teach you what happens. So supposedly a mass 
displaces space time, causes a gravity well, which causes the bending and warping of space time, which causes objects to basically be guided through the curvature of space time, free falling in a geodesic path, still moving linear from their reference frame. There is no attraction. There is no force. There is no pulling. This is archaic elementary version of gravity that we teach people when they're in middle school. This yes. isn't what your paradigm believes. And it can't be true mm -hmm, if mm -hmm, you are orbiting mm -hmm. the Give sun. Give me an example that? of something pulling something else a magnet magnet so what about it is pulling it the force go on get, get explain that a little bit more well, okay technically on a magnet it's pressure mediation based on this triple divergence and triple oh convergence. the gibberish again from you andrew hey can you what how is it gibberish Sorry. which which word didn't make Anthony, sense what's it no it's not it's not that the words are in not words it's that you don't use them in any usable man any which usable part of it way. wasn't usable oh you want to repeat what you said yeah, centrifugal divergence. Yeah, go ahead. Explain. Okay. Explain so it in a way that you think your uh, reg a regular audience would understand. Okay, so there's a... Mo I'll even go really simple for you. Really there simple. You have a donut, okay? Now we're going to draw the inside of the donut from the inside to the outside. It's going to give us... It's The lines are going to diverge away from each other. It would be centrifugal, right? Because it's moving out from the center, which is what centrifugal means. Then we have centripetal moving in towards the center, converging. So centrifugal divergence and centripetal convergence are not only not gibberish, they're very simple concepts that are just objective, right? And so yet it's you not asked needed me to, to explain, explain magnetism, magnetism, and then you freaked out when I used a word with three syllables in it. No. But yeah, it's the pressure mediation. Actually, there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. It's actually accelerating towards the null pressure created by the actual magnetic field itself. But I uh, want to stick on the fact that you can't use Newtonian mechanics and you were wrong about what you claimed gravity was because you were very arrogant in your opener about how we know exactly what gravity is and it's mass attracting mass and flat earthers just say, no, -uh, they have to deny it. You're wrong, my brother. That is not right. what gravity is in your paradigm. If it was, then the earth would have to be stationary. So the argument by gibberish is obscure and impenetrable jargon. And a lot of it has to do with using words unnecessarily you did not have to bring in any form of centripetal nothing when talking about electromagnetism. I've taken many courses in electromagnetism, calculus based. Thank you. So okay. back to, back to okay. Newtonian how physics. Do you how do you, yes, wait, how do you explain? Be useful. How do you no, explain? no, no. You wanted to talk about Newtonian physics. Yes. Newtonian physics is useful and about. not true at the same time. You can understand things at a third grade level, how they are useful, and yet they are not true at the same time. Would you agree? Uh, they can be useful, but not true at the same time. Sure. Yes. So is the concept of gas needing a container, is that a third grade level concept to understand? Yeah, I would say it's yes, a that's exactly really right. easy and That's why you teach third yeah. graders that. And that's why you teach adults grown-up physics, where they don't need a container. But then why were you teaching a whole room of grown-ups mass attracting mass in 2024? Uh, because it does attract each other. It and literally it doesn't. By morphing space-time. That isn't an attraction. That is a... That is a, tool, that is a byproduct of the do, does the human push the nails into the wood or does the hammer push the nails into the wood actually there's What's no it? pushing hey what i what i want you to, or there's only pushing you're right yes but what i want you to understand no, the, which one pushes push. the wood the hammer or the person which one both both so you could say the human pushes the nail in, even though it's not directly by the human right that is not no, in no, no, any look, way analogous question, yes or no it's sure. easy. Sure. So sure. yes, so the but planet it's not is causing analogous. De deformation That's... in the space-time. Stop interrupting me. You're so rude. Stop deforming. You're projecting. Space -time. Interrupting. Justin, Justin, is this a problem? I, I, I don't think it is actually a problem. Our audience is here for it. Um, he's trying to reply to you. Thank you. Thank um, you. So back to, to back. Be, to... Yeah, you guys are going fine. Just okay. Back to on. the back to the argument. If if Witzkit can have composure for five seconds. If you admit a human can be the one pushing the nail in and you don't have to have the most direct tool that it is pushing the nail in, then you can admit that gravity, the deformation of space-time caused by the mass is also, which the deformation is what's causing the attraction, is could also be described as the mass attracting the object. Just like the human pushed in the nail, the hammer pushed in the nail, the mass attracted the other mass the deformation in space time attracted the other mass semantics this is such a meaningless waste of time to talk about this 
No, actually, it's very important because uh, when you say mass attracts mass, that's from Newtonian mechanics and that denotes gravity as a force, right? An innate property of matter, right? And that has been disproven in your paradigm. And of course, even if it were true, you would require something akin to an ether. You would need a medium that's actually giving you mutual contact with the bodies because there is no time variable in Newtonian mechanics or Newtonian gravity, right? So it's instantaneous action at distance, which is why Newton explained, right? He can't even wrap his mind around it. It must be God doing it. And that anyone that would think that it could act instantly through the vastness of a vacuum through long distances, right? Innate brute matter on other matter without a medium in between them is it's so great an absurdity that no man with competent faculty of thinking in philosophical matters could ever fall into it. So that is very important because if you're claiming to know what gravity is, you don't need to denote it as something that's been disproven. That doesn't make any sense. So it is important. You're talking science explains things. Physics explains things. Math describes things. We're talking about do you have a viable explanation of physics to tell us that the earth is a tilted, wobbling, spinning ball flying through space? And the answer is that you do not. So we can't talk about Newtonian gravity. It's irrelevant. You can't have it. So <clears throat> you cite again, the Michaels and Morley failed experiment that you always like to bring up that proves the ether, which failed, that was acknowledged by Michael and Morley to be a failed to try to provide the ether. To, Wait, how to did... grasp again, at, if it's again with the interrupting control I thought you're yourself. Done. Oh, I never paused. So you you cite failed experiments. You you use gibberish to try to back up your arguments. Um, and now you're asking me to prove to you again that the Earth is a spinning ball. Can you please acknowledge any other of the eight arguments I've made in my opening argument? Especially, I would really like to hear about the star moving across the sky. What's it? Why can you see circles in the sky on the south and on the north, and they go in opposite directions? Okay, I'm happy to discuss your whole list, but not on the hills of you hand wave dismissing what you clearly were just wrong about. So if you want to be honest and just concede that, yeah, you misspoke when you said mass attracts mass. No, you can't have that. No, Newtonian gravity is no longer an option in your paradigm. You cannot have it. And that Mickelson Morley debunked it and that you cannot use it in that Newtonian gravity and the orbit of the earth cannot coexist anymore. You have to completely change all of physics to believe the Earth orbits around the sun. If you can concede that gravity is not mass attracting mass, that that's archaic and elementary and disproven for over a century, then sure, we can move on to something else. I've already acknowledged that Newtonian physics is wrong. Have you listened to me? Okay, I've so admitted that we... multiple times throughout this debate, and you want me to say it again. Sure, I'll say it a million times. Newtonian physics is a approximation of reality. It is extremely useful in all of our day-to-day -day lives and designs. And it is wrong because it's, it's only, an approximation. It's only now, useful now, mathematically, you bro. Admit, Can you human... please acknowledge this? It's only useful mathematically. There is a difference in science and math. Science explains things. Math describes things. Okay, what is something I something useful you... mathematically? What does that mean? Because, yes, Newtonian mechanics on like small scales and lower speeds and smaller gravitational presence, mm -hmm. right, is somewhat similar to relativity. So or, or any type of gravity, it's really just reverse engineered from kinematics anyway. So, yes, you can use it, use it to mathematically, do what? Use mathematically, it to do what? Ma listen, bro, math describes things. OK, science explains what? things. You can't. The point is that you need to offer an actual physical explanation. That's what physics yeah. is. You of said what's it's going useful. on you to see, show you said us it's that it's useful possible. on paper. What does that mean? It's useful on paper. I want you to admit what you're saying. What does it mean? What do you, what do you mean? What does it mean? Yeah, it's, you said yeah, it's, it's useful on paper. What does that mean? Yeah, we use it to do, for example, engineering. We use Newtonian mechanics. So predictions. Sure. So it's useful to make predictions about the world around us. Sure. Gotcha. What? This is so the problem. That's what I have and been I've already, this I've already said time. this. You're gonna. I've already said this. There are many equations that that could be replaced with that can give you the exact same predictions. In fact, you don't even need dynamics. You can mm -hmm. use a kinematic equation to solve for 9.8. For little g, downward acceleration, you can use a kin purely kinematic equation with initial velocity, height, and time to get the same value. You can use an electrostatic equivalence to get little g. You can use an electromagnetic equivalence to get big g. Wait, are you trying to say Newtonian physics is wrong? Well, what I'm saying is that- Is that what you're saying? No, no. What I'm actually saying is if you're going to claim the Earth's a ball flying mm -hmm, around the mm -hmm. sun and that gravity I is do. causing all the planets to orbit, you need to I provide do. us an actual big boy explanation of it. Not just math. We need physics. <laughs> Not just math. Also observation. 
That's my, my entire... No, no we need physical explanation. So, so That's can what we move on is. to another subject? What's it? Are you okay with that? You, wait, wait. But this is the problem. Whenever you guys supposedly use satellites and you do all this stuff with satellites, oh you say that God. this is what you do. I want to show that even when people study this stuff that they mm -hmm. don't know it. Whenever you supposedly put a satellite up, you use Newtonian mechanics. Well, sure, it works mathematically, but that has huge implications physically. It accounts for real inertial forces, which is specifically impossible. And if you're, if Newtonian mechanics was true, right, then the earth can't be orbiting. So why can't you use Einsteinian mechanics to solve for it? Cause it, cause it's fundamentally different with the ECI because you actually, the atomic clocks account for their change of velocity in the towards relative to the center of the ECI frame. So you can't use Einsteinian mechanics, but you have to in your paradigm. So if you actually are putting satellites up, all it proves is that the earth has to be stationary because you have to use a Newtonian mechanics. And you, yeah. you do you think they only use Newtonian mechanics to design satellites? What's it? Have you designed any satellites recently? I haven't designed satellites, but that's I, right, because I really, I really to, thought that that's what we were going to talk about. You that's what know. you specialized in. I didn't say I designed satellites, did I? Um, you would know if you did design satellites that they use. They don't only use Newtonian physics. They absolutely use relativity to explain a lot of the motions that they're going to have to go through because, yeah, they're up high. They don't obey the normal everyday day-to-day -day movements that we see on the day Earth, which is what Newtonian physics is. So, no, right. you're wrong when they say you say they only use Newtonian physics to design satellites. That's patently wrong. No, no, no. What I, so yeah, or, I would like orbital to mechanics, go back to my subject that I brought uses... up back in the beginning of this conversation where <laughs> I asked you to explain the rotation of the stars around the poles, please. I think you're scared because let's wrap this up real fast. I want to point out and see if you can answer this, right? So no, when, I'm not going to answer this. I'm people waiting say they answer use about the stars. people use the question they, people I've say asked they five people, minutes ago when you were you were disregarding it completely. You complained a lot about interrupting to have done it basically every time that I say something. But yeah, they claim to use relativity sometimes for stuff like the time corrections. But there's a major problem for you with satellites. They actually account for check this out a preferred direction for the propagation rate of light meaning that they actually account for a variance in C and it's provable. We have the actual documentation, right? Proving it. So let's see if you can answer this. If the electromagnetic wave, well, no, if the propagation rate of is actually variant, meaning that C is variant, the speed of light changes and it's a preferred direction. It propagates faster east to west. Do you agree that that would debunk your entire model? What's it? I've asked you this question like 10 minutes ago, probably now. Okay, um, let's move on. You, you can't answer. Deep review. Thank you. I would like you to explain the stars, the thing I brought up 20 minutes ago. The stars? Mm -hmm. What did I say about the stars? Did you listen or no? Yeah, of course. Do you want course. me to explain it again? Yeah, explain dude, them. Explain no. the motion they take. Dude, you, you're bringing up a day one flat earth argument, which means you haven't even researched it. So there's many explanations for the stars, one of which is that we have an azimuthal grid of vision. We have a limit to how, how we see, right? And this is provable. Is there's that? been many tests. There's been many tests to prove it, right? That we actually see in curved visual space. For example, the alley experiments, they actually took another test where they had a sphere with many people with uh, uh, exo exocentric pointers showing that the way they mapped out the relation to the center was curved. We have curved visual space. We have a limit. We have anticorpuscular, crepuscular rays, et cetera. All that to say. Mm -hmm. So whenever you uh, look towards the edge of your limit, what happens is there's an optical convergence and that would be the Southern rotation. And of course, if I'm looking North and I see the Northern rotation, if I turn and look South, it's going to look like it's going the opposite way, right? Even if it's going the same way, just because of perspective, it's going to look like it's going the opposite way. And then the question that that would need to be asked answered is, well, why does it look like it's going around a pole in the south, right? And the answer is because there's an there's a convergence, an optical convergence, just like crepuscular and anti-crepuscular rays, right? So when the sun sets in the west, you'll see the crepuscular rays. But if you look to the east, the exact opposite direction while the sun is setting, you'll see crepuscular rays converging to a point over there, 180 degrees away. That proves that perspective will make it look like there's an optical convergence point. That's what we see with the stars. So pretty simple. Awesome. And there's like four different explanations. It's so simple. Um, so I really like that you brought up the this azimuthal grid of vision. Do you have any like models to demonstrate how that works? Yeah. Could you bring that up and show us? You know what the model is. Why are you playing the game? I What's want to show your audience. Okay. Right. This is for the audience. So and I want to show you something else as my. What's the name of it? What's that goofy dude's name? Mm, you know it. What's the name? It's your model. You don't know it? 
You don't know. No, you don't I, even... I, I actually. Uh, Someone's going to say Walter Bislam. Well, yeah. You've seen him before, right? Yes. Okay. So just stick up ahead. You're going to say, oh, how does the light bend like that? I would like you to show you. I'd like to show the model, please. Oh, my gosh, bro. It's so it's funny that you model. think that you dictate the whole conversation. You don't. You know what? I could just show it. Do you want me to show it? What's it? No, I'm going to show it because you're not going to do it. The thing I asked you to do, please. But yeah, but I then then I'm making the next point, right? Because this is actually not your you you don't like I'm run this. You to explain your. Wait, hey, can you acknowledge you that about? you? I, I just explained what I. You're said. in charge. You just, What's it? You're when I ex I just explained what happens, and you literally hand waved it. You didn't even acknowledge the anti corpuscular corpuscular rays. You just ignored it. Mm -hmm. You can't yep. actually. I'm, offer I'm literally rebuttal. asking you a question about the thing you brought up. Yeah, yeah. Can you acknowledge the corpuscular and anticorpuscular rays? Absolutely acknowledged. Okay, so you agree that perspective will oh make it my look. I get to the diagram. Get to the model, dude. Do you agree that perspective will make it look like it's? Can I show the? Can I show my screen, Austin? Dude, this, this is the worst. But you, you've never been on here before, I'm guessing, because you you have like the worst etiquette I think I've ever encountered. But I'm happy. I have it pulled up right here. I'm happy to show the screen. But what I want you to do first is actually mm. acknowledge mm. my point. Acknowledged. Dude. No, no, no. Do, so do you agree that perspective will cause the illusion of convergence 180 degrees away from the source of rotation or light? Yes. I looked. So you said yes? Okay. Well, there we go. That's what happens on the earth. Easy. The stars. Easy. Yeah, I agree. So here, we'll share it. So I don't even know what's your contention now. Here, here is the share screen. I would like you to scroll up a little bit. Oh, you want me to read his description? That very line. No, no, no. A little bit lower, where it says, "How does the?" You see that? Yeah. Yeah. This guy's obsessed with me. Isn't that weird? So this man who created this model does not believe in flat Earth. In fact, he created this model to disprove it, and he knows flat Earth leaders use it to mislead his followers. I want everyone to know that the model you are using to prove your theory was proven, was used to disprove it. That's what I wanted to show. So the next thing I want you to do is scroll down to your model a little bit. All right, this is, dude, dude, I know you think that you're tough on the internet, but what's not going to happen okay. is you're not going to sit over there and act like I'm in your classroom and you're going to give me commands. So now what we're going to do is point out actually what happened is that this guy put this model out attempting to disprove it under his own admission. It was way more difficult than he thought. He ended up showing it actually is viable. Then he had to take many weeks to try to figure out how it wouldn't work. Then he straw manned the actual stars, not putting the true star data there, but random star points, then making up the idea that they had to go 180 degrees, which they do not. It's inaccurate star positions. Then we started showing this is just the Stellarium data. This isn't anything more than him placing Stellarium data on a plane. So yeah, we showed it to people and then he updated it and brought me up. And yeah, he's an anti-flat earther that it backfired. He admitted that it was way more viable than he thought it was going to be. And it was way more difficult to try to disprove it. So you didn't even What's know it? about what really happened. And you try to teach the audience about what happened. But you What's were, it? Is, well, the mod, is, the molid, is the model valid or not? Um, it's it's a possibility. Yeah, it's one possibility. Okay, thank you. So now please go to the actual model and go to change the ray parameter to plus 200%. Why? Because I want to show you something about your own model. All right, and now make the dome grid checked on and the stars checked on and the dome ray checked on at the bottom. Yeah, Wait, check, check dome, dome ray, stars, dome grid. They're all on. And make observer latitude negative 90. Negative 90. Do, do, right. do you know you now, don't I, would real... like, I would like for you to look at the model from the side of you. Why, why, how is this relevant? I want to show that your theory requires stars on the opposite side of the planet to exit the dome and the light comes back down to you 180 degrees in the opposite direction for you to try to literally bend over backwards to try to explain the observations that are seen on a daily basis on this earth. Incorrect. So where you actually have this, of course, is at the furthest edge of Antarctica. And these, of course, are not yes. observed date. These, of course, are not, they're, of course, not observed daily there. Right. Mm -hmm. the, so Southern Star Trails, mate, where's the 90 degree zenith angle measurement? Well, this is what your model wait, 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 wait. is saying. I'm true. talking. Did you hear me talking? 
Okay, so you made me go to 90 degrees. What I want to know is where are the 90 degree zenith angle measurements that verify this observation that you just falsely claimed are observed by everyone every day? Where's okay. the actual, there's not one that exists. Mm -hmm. Not one so, time. So what you're saying is this model is wrong, which you oh. just said it was true. What I'm saying is when you go to the extremity out here, this uh -huh. actual observation doesn't uh -huh. exist. So this model's wrong. Yeah, the model's wrong at the edge where we don't that actually have so observation. Crazy. Where we just don't said actually, the model was right. Where we don't actually have observational data. But uh -huh. when you take when you take it where we do have actual observational data, for it example, just uses Southern Africa. Every Southern time Africa. I'm talking, you interrupt. Why would you have the audacity to complain about it? Southern Africa. Okay. So like, you notice how ridiculous you're being, right? Like you're interrupting me. I'm just going to finish my point. So in reality, we don't make observations here, right? So we make observations mm -hmm. in different places. So there's, and there are many observate are many potential explanations for the Southern stars. This is just one of them. There's just one of them. There's another person you can look up uh, if anyone actually is curious. It's uh, L of two, uh, L of two, tomb of illumination used to be Flyers Flossy, and he breaks down the actual quadrant, the optical projected quadrant in the back or in the uh, sides. Also, someone's taking a dome, projected stars onto the dome and shown that the exact stars will be in the south, just completely reflected as a projection to the south. It's been replicated that we would see southern star trails on a flat earth with a dome, with an azimuthal grid of vision, and with a projection, with like a, a pol electromagnetic polarized holographic projection. People can think that's crazy. It doesn't matter. It's objectively, there are many ways to explain the Southern Star Trails. This is right, a fact. My, my turn, my turn. So you, your criticism is people don't live on Antarctica. It's not regularly observed. So it's this, never observed. this specific situation is invalid. Let's go a little bit. Let's bring the latitude a little bit more north to Southern Africa and then look at it from the side view. Okay. Now, are we, are these real? People observe every day. Would you acknowledge that? A lot no, of people no. Are there. these real stars? Are these real star positions? You're not going to show it. I, I, what I just showed it. What are you talking about? You're not. It's from the side. You don't want to show it, dude. I, dude, I a little bit more, a little bit more, you know, a little bit more angle down where the Earth is, and more to the side where the observer is on the side of this hemisphere. Okay, so in this specific I don't situation, want to show it. I, I acknowledge the light doesn't in this case exit the dome, but you can absolutely see that the stars definitely do still go a 180 degree curve from one side of the planet to one, the other side of the planet and then back into your eye. That is Occam's razor, if I've ever okay. heard it. Okay, now that let's say the same thing I already said. Are those actual star observations or are they random arbitrary stars that he decided to draw lines to? What's the answer? You know the answer, and this is your and model. The answer is that it's not even actual observations. Obviously, well, it's, a, it's a model. So those, so no, you don't have about? to see that. You so don't have model to see is. That. No, you don't have to see that, right? No, we like the model without the the stupid little lines drawn on there. That that was he admitted that this was the only way he could figure out how to try to disprove it because he was surprised at how well it, he was able to make it work on a flat Earth. And he actually then arbitrarily through the through the lines, his argument is light couldn't bend like that. Been like what? Your straw man version of fake observations that don't happen in reality? So this has completely backfired on you. Of course, there's substantial evidence that we actually see in curved visual space. So the real question is, why doesn't your model account for what can be experimentally proven, which is that we have a curved visual limit? Mm -hmm. Right. So, which okay. means actually so, your model is okay. impossible. Can I go? Is it my turn? Yeah, okay. acknowledge what so, I've said. So if there was a star, and maybe it, it is not in the exact same location that it is on this model, because it is a model. But if there was a star on that side of the dome, what's it? Do you believe that the light from that star would go to the other side of the planet, take a 180 degree turn back just so it can go into your eyeball and you can see a star from the opposite side of the planet? Do you believe that that is how your model works? No. No, that's not a real observation. So this model is wrong. The arbitrary lines he drew to fake stars that aren't real observations is wrong. Yeah, so I just an said actual that. Actual star in that location. Do you think that would happen? But there's not. If there was, what's it? Did you hear what I said? So you're saying, you ignoring it, wait, me wait. Purpose? So you're saying if we made observations on the earth that we don't, 
would the model not work? The model wouldn't work if there were observations that don't exist. That's correct. Witsit doesn't want to acknowledge <laughs> <laughs> the fact that his model forces, literally bends over backwards, the the acronym to describe arbitrary thinking, the light of these stars to absolutely bend over backwards just to explain the observation seen at the Southern Pole. As I explained in my introduction, you can absolutely see the Southern Cross, whether you're on point D or point E of my presentation, please go back if you don't remember, on both sides of the Antarctica, you can see the Southern Cross. To explain that on a flat earth theory, you have to have absurd forms of optics that they like can turn 180 degrees just because you observe it. <laughs> it's, it's okay, just... now, again, again, uh, these aren't actual observations that you have to see from 180 degrees. That's nonsense. This entire thing is not even reality. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop sharing it now. And like I also explained, there are multiple explanations of the Southern stars, right? So there are actually, there's an explanation that there's actually two, two just like um, it's called ma uh, magnetohydrodynamics, right? That you would actually just have two actual rotations and that we would see the center, the center point. You would have to actually go to the south and explore more adequately because that would significantly change certain layouts uh, further south, which, I mean, you know, that's an interesting point. The third one is that it's actually a projection and that it projects equally out into six quadrants, which can be replicated, has been replicated and recorded. We've replicated this. So we get, you think it's not possible, okay? I'm telling you that, it is possible. We've replicated it in physical reality. And what I want to know is how are we going to address all the stuff that falsifies the globe? Mm -hmm. That's what I want to know. Because right, if right. I'm like, oh, well, I mm -hmm. this guy arbitrarily says he doesn't agree with some of the explanations that Flat Earth has. Okay, cool. You, you were wrong. We do have possible explanations. So let's get to the evidence that falsifies the globe. Because you agree that if there's tons yeah, of evidence right. that falsifies the globe, and then there's possible explanations for this on a flat earth and we're still stuck with a flat earth, right? Yeah, let's get to it. Let's get to the stuff that disproves the globe. Um, so okay. his uh, his explanation again was magneto hydrodynamics. Um, again, impenetrable jargon argument by gibberish, no explanation of it. So what? I want to talk about the thing you said before I started talking where you were saying that the stars travel in the same direction on the poles, whether it's north or south, because um, because you're just confused, right? It's about, it's an orientation issue. So this is obviously going to disprove the globe. So could I please share my screen to uh, discuss this? No, topic? I'm sharing my screen. You just claimed that this word was mm -hmm. impenetrable, made up jargon, garbage. No, I didn't. I didn't say it was made up. I said you it did. was impenetrable because you didn't explain it. You didn't explain the point you were trying to make. Which That's what is, I said. It, Okay, you misrepresented now, you know, my point. Another straw man from the flat boy. So, so you think big words are just gibberish? No, it's the called word impenetrable because you know your audience isn't going to understand it. What's it? Keep well, up. No, I I actually explained. I literally explained it right after saying but you that didn't. That you mean, stopped explaining that one and started explaining a different subject. I said that we that would mean there's two. I would say that means that there's two actual rotations in the electromagnetic field. I literally said those words. Oh, well, I guess the audience will decide when they'll rewind the paper or rewind the video. Could I share my screen to talk about <laughs> okay. the thing that's going to disprove the globe? So it wasn't actually impenetrable garbage. That's interesting. It wasn't at all. <laughs> You're so right. So can I share my screen, Justin? I'm trying to stop wanna, sharing. It's like I want to disprove the globe right now. Oh, uh, dude, it's saying it's saying that the Zoom meeting is not meeting. Can, uh, can you still hear me? Oh. I can yeah, still hear you. You're still here. Everything's working good. I'm not frozen or anything? No, oh. you are not. Okay, it's saying that the Zoom chat. meeting is not responding, so okay. it's like telling me to close the program. It's okay, I can I've... stop it here. If you need to refresh Zoom, that's okay as well. Yeah, I might have to just come back. Yeah. Okay. Is it still saying that's... I'm sharing screen? No, I stopped no. your screen share for you. Oh, okay. And you're, st and you're still actively now. here. Okay. Okay, I'm just like just, frozen. Just hang on, on just screen. hang just hang on, William. Don't go Well, if he's gonna share sharing... screen, if he's gonna share screen, I can drop and come back. If you're gonna put his screen up, that work? Uh, I can't share my yeah, screen. Yeah, your video is frozen now. Go ahead. Okay. Drop, come back with it before he shares the screen. Um, Thank you, sir. I'll go ahead and just do some 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 housekeeping here. Um, so while Witsit refreshes himself, I'll let everybody remind everybody to hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, we're getting tons of subscribers in here. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. Would love to see that subscriber count roll over to 170,000 subscribers. This is one 
hot debate right now. And I think you guys would all agree this oh, is fantastic. Justin, do I need to drop out? Do you, am I looking okay? You're fine, my friend. You're fine, my friend. Um, we're just going to wait for Witsit to come back in. Um, I just got to keep my eye on uh, Witsit coming back in. Um, yeah, so hit like, hit subscribe. Um, don't forget, if you are at all interested, if you think you've got a way to um, defend a flat Earth or a globe Earth, uh, the modern day debate email is on top. We are dropping the gauntlet. We are opening the door to anyone who wants to come try out and attempt. Um, do you think you could stand toe to toe with Witsit Gets It? Do you think you could stand toe to toe with William Harris? Well, just send your email over to James and we'll give you guys that opportunity. Uh, not, sure how much, not sure how much more housekeeping I can do while we wait for Witsit to <laughs> reconnect. How much longer do we have on the um, uh, discussion? So, yeah, we have about 10 minutes, 10 minutes yeah. left when he comes back. Um, I, I've got the timer kind of stopped, but you guys are doing a fantastic job. The audience is totally here for it. Um, Super Chat's coming in like crazy. If you guys have a question for our debaters, feel free to uh, throw in a Super Chat. You might also notice that we have some new audience interactions going on here tonight. If you sub or you send a Super Chat or if you become a channel member, your name gets shown on our screen. Hey, we're doing that thing people have been doing forever. Um, so your name will be there uh, forever in history in our backlog of our videos. This is easily uh, the second in the top two debates of 2024 by far. Uh, <laughs> I'll let everyone stop and think about what that means for a minute. Well, Witsit is literally coming back in. Hey, Witsit. What up, bro? We're so nice to have you back. Um, so, yeah, the audience is electric. Uh, you guys are doing a fantastic job. Everyone's loving this. We have about 10 minutes left before Q and A. Um, so okay. I will let you boys continue. All right, real, can I share my screen now? Well, sure, sure. But real fast, William, you understand that you're just going through all your points and you still didn't acknowledge the one point, one argument I made in the opener. Mm -hmm. And you're also avoiding all the direct refutations of your arguments. Oh yeah, I acknowledge that for sure. So back to the globe model. So this is gonna disprove the globe as uh, what it has already described. So the flat earth model, um, you acknowledge what's it that the stars are rotating in different, sorry, are in the same direction versus the South pole versus the North pole on the North on the globe model. You'd say it's the same direction, right? Yeah, we'll say again. <laughs> you said the stars are rotating in the same direction when you're in the South pole versus in the North pole due to your as a mythic, as a mythical grid of vision, um, we're seeing that this going the same direction, right? Uh, I said that they move in the same cardinal direction, but they move clockwise and counterclockwise. Gotcha. So different directions because of optics. Do you disagree that if you different look the opposite way, something's going to look like it's moving the opposite direction? You I didn't... absolutely do disagree with that because we have something that exists called the right hand rule. And Winsett likes to not tell his followers that this is a print, a very normal principle in physics that yeah. the right-hand rule gives you an orientation that allows you to not be confused about things like that. When he says something like, people get confused between a six and a nine, that's the same as being confused of which direction the stars are going in the north and south. No, we know it's two different directions, and it's not just a confusion based on your orientation. Because you can, when you go in the north and you observe the right-hand rule, you curve your fingers in the direction of the curve of the stars, your thumb will point up. And if you go in the south and you curve your fingers in the port direction of the curve, your thumb will be pointing down. They are not going in the same direction by observation. Right? What's it? You agree with that, right? Dude, that's crazy that you thought that that was a good point. So, Do the, you agree the, or no? No, of course. So I don't agree. The direction of current is actually what that's about, which is funny, right? Mm -hmm. The right-hand rule is actually about the direction of currents. Mm -hmm. You don't want to talk about that, though. Let's not talk about that because that uh -huh. actually works perfectly with the flat Earth. That's crazy. The right hand and left hand rule work perfectly mm -hmm. with the flat Earth explanation of a singular motion, a singular direction, actual direction, and then a downward electric current. But uh -huh. but what I'm explaining to you is if everything's actually moving in one direction, but then I look the other direction, it will objectively look like it's going the other way. Mm -hmm. This, it, do you, you're saying that's not true. And then sure. you brought up the right-hand rule and said, if I assume the Earth's a globe, 
And I put it, yeah, we all understand why the globe claims they look like they're going the opposite way. On the globe, all the stars are going east to west, but we're upside down relative to the northern position. So they look like they're going the opposite way. Gotcha. So do they move in the opposite direction? In Obs actuality, they, they all move in the same direction, east yeah. to west. In actuality. But how about in observed, observation? The, there's a difference in the observed, right. in the so actual about, card. Because observed. what's in what's in actuality can be up to interpretation, right? But what's in observed is more much more objective. So what do we observe to be true? How do you not understand what I'm saying? Which is that all stars move in the same cardinal direction. Mm -hmm. So do you agree? Same cardinal direction. Go ahead and explain that. All stars move east to west. There we go. So when you're in the North Hemisphere, they're going in one direction. And when you're in the South Hemisphere, they're going in the other direction. You would agree? Yes. So they do go in two different directions. No, no, no. They're when all... you are in the bro, different Bro, this is so crazy. This right? is like Flat Earth 101, bro. And this is what he's going to eat up the last 10 minutes. He's not going to, he doesn't want to address my argument. But I'm going to say it one more time. All the stars move in the same cardinal direction, east to west. Right. But mm -hmm. there is an optical perceived direction, which is clockwise and counterclockwise. If you look, the, if every star was moving around Polaris and you look south, they would objectively look like they're going the opposite direction. Objectively, it can be replicated. You would have the optical convergence point like crepuscular and anticrepuscular rays, which he can see that exists. I want you to address the actual electrical field argument. We've talked about like all of your arguments. You, I'm going to talk for a second now. You didn't concede to the retrograde. You claimed retrograde proves we move around the sun, even though there's a kinematic equivalence with retrograde, even according to relativity. That's absolutely not true. Parallax, aberration, and retrograde, kinematic equivalence all work with the Earth being stationary. Would you like to concede retrograde doesn't prove the Earth orbits the sun? No, absolutely not. Because what planetary... But what the globe model predicts is okay. the retrograde movement, right? We would we could predict that even if we didn't see it, right? If we imagine just a brand new planet that joined our solar system, we could predict the motion it would move. We would predict what what um retrograde motion we would see with that new planet. It's a predictive, oh. it has predictive capability. So does a geocentric model. No, it doesn't, Austin. As it you, absolutely does. As it's you called have said multiple times, your entire model is founded on the fact that, yeah, we see it multiple times in the sky. Um, so we can maybe make some predictions about it, but we can't Dude. really do any further than that because it's we don't know what it is. We don't know why it's moving. We don't know where it's going. We don't know anything about it. We just know we see it. We know more than that. We see it, but we also know more. It's called the neo tyconic model. Okay. And it absolutely has the same exact kinematic predictive capability for retrograde. This is very basic stuff. If you would like to read a paper on it, I'm happy to send it to you, right? It's called the Neo-Tyconian Newtonian Machian Analysis of Planetary Motion. Mm -hmm. It's not complicated. But now, so you're wrong. If you think retrograde proves the Earth's orbiting the sun, I wouldn't be talking down to so many people like flat earthers are just ignorant. That's very basic stuff. There's a kinematic equ equivalence according to relativity. So that means all all astronomical observations can be validly explained from a central position. Go read some Stephen Hawking. He'll tell you the same thing. But what I want you to do is address my one argument I made, which is that we have a vertical electric field on the earth with equipotential lines, and that this requires two Gaussian surfaces that are parallel to each other and perpendicular to that. And since we have a uniform electric field, you cannot have that on a sphere. You cannot have uniformity of a vertical electric field on a sphere. It's physically impossible. Therefore, proving that the Earth is not a sphere and that there is something acting as a second Gaussian plate above us. Gotcha. So I will acknowledge what you're saying. Um, the first thing you said, what was that um, model that you described that would uh, display the geo, sorry, the retrograde It's called the neo-tyconic model or neo-tyconian model. Gotcha. And you will admit you didn't explain what that model was in this. I debate, did. I right? did already explain it. I said, oh, it you explained it. Do you think everyone in this debate or yes. most most people would understand what you were saying? Yeah. And I'll, I'll repeat what I said already. Gotcha. Which was, so everyone who's listening right now, if you don't already understand what the neo Tychonian, whatever the hell model that Witz had just described is, if you don't already understand what it is, then he knows he's taking advantage of you. OK, so, so I are. I already said what it is, which is the neo model is 
all the planets moving around the sun as that whole system moves around the earth. I then explained that if you can just think about it for a second, you would know that would give you the exact same explanation for why the planets look like they're going backwards in retrograde. It's called the Neo-Tychonic system. Tycho Brahe system, of course, was here before any other heliocentric model. It's a slightly updated using Machian principle. Here's the paper. Can I share the screen? You're just, you're just showing your, can I share my screen to the paper, please? Yes, let me stop sharing. But to be fair, you may have missed it, but I absolutely did explain that. And if you think about it, it makes very simple sense. Oh, am I mm -hmm. not sure? Yeah, okay. The Newtonian Machian Analysis of Neotychonian Model of Planetary Motions. It was it was uh, published by the European Journal of Physics. Last time I did a debate on this, people claimed that it wasn't a real paper. So I just wanted to show it. This is the paper. Um, and actually, if you want it, I can get it for you. I can get the, I have the actual PDF. So, okay. PDF. And anyway, and it's not even like that. Sim it's not that complicated. Please don't freeze again. Okay. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? If all the planets moved around the sun and then the sun was moving around the earth from the earth's position, as the planets move around the sun, it would look like they're going backwards from our perspective, which is the same explanation the heliocentric model has for retrograde. Your and So your entire argument is that we... Everything is moving the exact way our gravity predicts, except we want to be the inertial ones. Is that your prediction? First of all, we have scientifically, That's what you just said, right? we've already scientifically and experimentally proven that the earth is a stationary lab frame with interferometry. Your gravity Wait, doesn't the, predict the I planet. Think I asked a yes or no question, but I, I was thinking you're saying yes. So yeah, yeah, the, what earth, you're saying the earth is, is inertial provably. That's what I said. Everything looks, everything looks just like as if they were a bunch of planets orbiting the sun. It, it all looks like that, and it very well might be that way. Also, we're not orbiting the sun. Well, no, actually, it only looks that way because we created the system over time, right? And it still doesn't even work. We have the Mercury perihelion shift. It doesn't work. It doesn't even work with your model or with any version of gravity that's ever been proposed. Right? It doesn't work. But yes, what we saw was that there are something called stars and then planets, planet, wandering stars. They move a little different and they move seemingly backwards from our perspective. I explained two options. One is that we actually measure the motion right, in relation to the background stars. So if the planets periodically slow down, in relation to the background stars, it would look like they're going backwards. It would cause retrograde. Secondly, it could just be that the star, the planets move in relation to the sun that moves around the earth, and that would give you retrograde. So now we're going to go to the actual empirical measurements on the earth that tried to measure the motion of the earth that is claimed and prove that the earth is not orbiting the sun and Michelson-Morley requiring Newtonian mechanics be thrown out and Einstein saying, Oh, turns out everything that happens on the earth is going to happen like the earth is in a state of rest. You'll never be able to disprove it's in a state of rest. You'll never be able to measure or detect the earth moving through space. That is your current position. So if we're going to use Occam's razor, that would mean the earth is, of course, at rest. You're going to claim it's an illusion. So you don't like Occam's razor. Occam's razor I destroys like the I do like Occam's razor. I do love Occam's razor because mine requires so few lesser assumptions than yours. You are literally trying to say everything on the, every, it all looks like it's orbiting the sun, but we're not. We're the inertial ones, but everything else is orbiting the sun even, but but the sun is orbiting us. That that requires an unbelievable amount of 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 cognitive dissonance. What's it? Um, no, no, address so, the point. Address oh, that the measurement I showed think the I earth did is because not, the earth is earth is, the measurement showed the earth is not moving around the sun. And what your position did, if we're going to apply Occam's razor, if we use highly precise interferometry that should be decisive, quote unquote, from Einstein, Michael's over ten times over ten times more sensitive than it needs to be to detect mm -hmm. the orbit of the Earth, and it shows the Earth is stationary. Mm -hmm. Occam's razor would say the Earth is stationary. What did your side do? Throughout all of physics, throughout Newtonian mechanics, came up with a brand new idea of 4D space-time geometry that bends and warps. And actually, even though we're curving around the sun, we're not curving. We're going straight. We're going straight in an orbit. And then we're free-falling through a geodesic path. And we weren't able to detect it because it's just linear motion and the interferometer can't detect it. But then in 2004, we actually detected linear motion with the interferometry by weighing, which even disproves that explanation. So there is no way the Earth is orbiting. It's a fact. So your subjective opinion of how you think it's cognitive dissonance or it's convenient doesn't in any way combat the physical empirical measurements. 
So have Let's you researched about Michaels and Morley? That? Are you ready for Michaels and Morley? Yeah, yeah. Michaels right. and Morley. So, sorry, um, Michaels hold and Morley. On, hold on. So I'm we're sorry. we're we're pretty much at the end of our our open discussion. In fact, we're we've gone over uh, a little bit, and I know that William, you really wanted to have um, like a closing statement. So, yes. um, I will allow. How much time do you think you want there, William, for uh, the closing statement? A minute or two minute or two so i'm going to allow you a closing statement and then i'm going to return the exact same time uh, to witsit to uh, have the final word um, and then we'll go into uh q a okay awesome thank you no you're welcome all right, all right and, everyone... uh, it's all yours all right from my final argument i want to talk about this man mike hughes mike hughes was born and raised into a loving family in oklahoma city and he killed himself on February 22nd, 2020, for the cause of Flat Earth. And if all of the audience tonight truly, truly want to challenge their perspective and try to discover real truth, please do not watch another Flat Earth documentary that's trying to put, turn, that's trying to prove Flat Earth wrong. Do not watch another one of those. Instead, watch a documentary about Rajneesh, Kiram or Max Nexium, that's supposed to say Nexium, sorry with it, N. Nexium, watch Ragnish Purim or Nexium or Love Has Won or Heaven's Gate. Watch documentaries about these things and other things like them because one person has already died in the name of Flat Earth. We do not. We want to ensure that this never ever happens again. Thank you. That's my final argument. All right, what's it? Uh, you can have the final word. It's just over a minute, so it's all yours, bud, and then we'll get into Q&A. Mike Hughes supposedly uh, was a flat earther that wanted to prove the earth's not curving and shot a rocket up, not even higher than the highest building on the earth. <laughs> and we, sad, send yes. balloons up, we send balloons up over 100,000 feet. What's even funnier is he's on record admitting he's not actually a flat earther, and all the people that were with him making the movement uh, the, to raise the money came out said it was just a PR stunt to try to raise money. He he didn't think the earth was flat. So an, a globe earther was dumb enough to think it made sense to claim going lower than the highest building on the earth would prove flat earth to try to raise money and lie to people. So that's a very underheaded tactic. And what we proved is that retrograde was wrong. What we proved is that the lunar eclipse is a geometric impossibility on the globe. What we proved is that you couldn't even address for a second the vertical electric field on the earth and that you don't understand the MMX and then subsequent interferometry measurements prove the earth is not orbiting. The truth is that the earth is a stationary topographical plane. All you did was look at the cycle of the sky, reverse engineer a model, re presuppose and affirm the consequent and then Hanway dismiss all empirical measurements so that is the that is an, a summary of the debate thank you it's it all right uh wow what an amazing debate uh that is one i'll never forget thank you gentlemen so much that was awesome uh, the audience here is definitely loving it i'm loving it and because of that we have a whole lot of work still to do boys uh, but before we get into those super chats, I'm going to go ahead and just remind everyone to go to hit, hit like and subscribe. Don't forget to become a channel member. Um, also, if you think you've got what it takes to go toe to toe with which it gets it. Hey, man, uh, modern day debates opening up the door to anyone who wants a shot. And uh, William Harris, I'm pretty confident we're going to see you again someday, too. So if you think you got what it takes to go up against William Harris and defend the flat earth, hey, email us. Let us know what your arguments would be and how you would defend those arguments. Um, before we get into the Super Chats, actually, what I would really like to do, uh, Witsit, where can people find you any given day on the internet? Uh, Witsit gets it <clears throat> on YouTube and every platform. Every platform is Witsit gets it. We're about to start dropping TikToks and uh, X and stuff like that, so you can check out. I'm going to be active on X, but yeah, Witsit gets it on YouTube is the primary place. And Telegram, where you can actually speak freely and uncensored all right and uh, we've got you linked here in our dis in our in our description as well uh, but william we don't have anything here for you so is there do you have an active channel are you on no. any discord servers regularly someone might hunt you down and throw a gauntlet for now i'm just william harris william harris mm -hmm. we all liked william harris very much thank you very much thank all you. right let's jump into these super chats shall we um can go 44 $10 
question for Witsit. Mr. B spent 50 hours in Antarctica, filmed the 24 hour sun, and uh, tw- filmed the 24 hour sun at the Union Glacier region. Is he part of the conspiracy? Mr. Beast, part of the Lizard Man alum- Illuminati? Yeah, that's called uh, poisoning the well. But uh, they admittedly didn't see the sun for 24 hours. So they only saw sunlight. They admitted they didn't see the actual sun for 24 hours. I know a former NASA employee that was stationed there for six months says you never see the sun for 24 hours, which is required on the globe. We see the sun for 24 hours in the north. We have tons of time lapses of it. All the ones from the south are faked. So that doesn't, no, it doesn't prove anything. Admittedly, they didn't even see the sun for 24 hours. We're actually planning a trip to Antarctica and I'll prove it to you myself that we're not going to see the sun for 24 hours. So that's a globe problem. All right. Next question, LJ dollar ninety nine. This one's likely for you, William. Has gravity ever been measured as a force? It's been measured as a force as much as a force could ever be measured. How's that? That's your answer. That's fine. There is a um, limit to our understanding of anything. There's always a limit, and at some point, a phenomena that is observed consistently every single time with the same conditions you see it so often you label it a force and once it's observed that many times forces become fact so yes we've observed it as a force because that's gravity is not a force anymore thank you Woodson. no problem brother okay um just for the record i, I don't have anything of, against uh, a little back and forth during q a but i generally like the person who got the question asked uh, to have final words. So William, like, just so you know, I consider that fair play, but I would have let you have last word on that question. Okay. Understood. Thank uh, you. Can go 44, $10 question for Witsit in, I assume they're saying 2011, uh, cause they wrote 20,111, but 2011 James may TV presenter flew in a U2 spy plane to 70,000 feet and the curvature of the earth is clearly visible. Is James May part of the conspiracy? Oh, man, dude. The geometry of your model says you don't see the curvature of the earth from 70,000 feet, bro. Why do you guys say stuff like that? You wouldn't see the curvature from 120,000 feet. You wouldn't see the curvature from 62 miles. And then when you have like incredibly famous theoretical physicists from your side, like Neil deGrasse Tyson, come out and explain this with specificity, or the person that runs the world's biggest... Um, planetarium explaining you wouldn't even see it from the iss show all the math you guys throw them under the bus so do we believe the mainstream and it's so obvious what the earth is or do we believe everyone that undermines the mainstream because they feverishly fight crazy flat earthers it's not really adding up so no you didn't see the curvature from seventy thousand feet we've been to one hundred twenty thousand feet and not seen the curvature right with hot with a uh, high altitude balloons So no, he's not in on it. Depends on what camera he uses. I can make my sidewalk look curved. I can make my desk look curved. If you impose curvature with the lens, your own model says you wouldn't see it from that height. So please don't say that anymore. I would love to give a response to this. So first off, you didn't listen. Absolutely can. But like I said, Witsit will get to respond and have the final word. Perfect. So first off, Witsit, you didn't listen to the question. He said he was in a plane and observed it. There was no camera. Second of all, if you were on a globe let's explore the globe model theory for a second if you were on a globe how tall would you need to go how high would you need to go to see a curve what's it well it's actually debated you guys can't give me a definitive answer so how about you give me an answer i'm saying i've seen many the math done many different ways because it has Mm -hmm. to invoke optics and it's actually Mm -hmm. not completely determined but um i i i personally think that you could see the curvature of the earth from pretty low even looking at the ocean but your so, model. So you're contradicting what you just said. You couldn't see the mo- the curve of the airplane. Yeah, but my but your model's math actually says that you wouldn't see the curvature of the Earth in a plane. You absolutely would not. And that's what all the people that do the math for you. So if if a globe earther wants to show me the math of how you would see it, mm-hmm. I'll happily look at it. Okay, but just basically claiming you see in a plane is ridiculous. Your model does not claim that. It, it claimed you wouldn't see it over sixty miles. Everyone just heard you contradict yourself. We, you can have the last word. Okay, so what I'm saying is that I think that it would be obvious that the Earth is a sphere, even at the surface of the Earth, with things like engineering. I think you would be able to see it over like even shorter uh, increments of plane survey data, right? When we actually use plane survey data up to 100 square miles. So I'm saying you would actually see it with things like the autolites and stuff like that. We don't see it. 
the proof we don't see it. We don't see left-right curvature at all. But again, my point is very simple, that your model does not claim you would see curvature from a plane. So everyone that's still claiming they saw curvature from a plane, which I just flew like seven times, I promise you did not. Okay, 100%. I, <laughs> Why not? That's a weird thing to say. I know for a fact that no one in here has seen curvature from a plane. You, I know many pilots, including ones that were in the military. They say that the earth absolutely does not curve from a plane. And no, his question said that he showed everyone the curve, meaning he had to have videoed it. So I did hear the question. And again, if you guys think there's a ball, that's cool. But we've sent altitude, high altitude balloons up 120,000 feet showing that there isn't curvature. So if you're claiming you saw it from 30,000 feet, something's not adding up, right? All right. Thank you, Woodsit. And thank you, William. Uh, next question, again, from LJ. So far, it's just Kango and LJ coming back and forth. So LJ, uh, and because it's from our favorite LJ, there's no other LJ. This is definitely a question for William. Uh, 499, Globies blindly trust our modern science, yet... Look where the food pyramid got us in 2024 from fit to fat. When has earth curvature ever been measured? So curvature, um, you can measure the curvature with weather balloons. You can measure it by observing things going underneath the horizon. You can measure them with uh, transmission lines and at the salt flats that go so far that you can see them affected by the curvature of the earth. There's many, many different ways to measure the curvature of the earth. And just because you do not want to believe, you do not want to trust in these scientific organizations, I understand. You, you, you look at them as distrustful people, and I get it. But at the end of the day, you are throwing the entire universe of calculations out with a misunderstanding. Thank you. All right, I got I to point out for you, bro. Seeing things go below the horizon or looking in the distance and seeing a curve is not a measurement. It's like me looking down a, a hallway and saying, that table is seven feet. Like I can guess maybe or something. It's not a measurement. He's asking when the Earth's curvature has been physically measured, not optically assumed and reified. So optics, you can use optics to make measurements. You agree, obviously. What's it? Say again? You can use optics, please pay attention to the debate. You can use optics to take measurements. You would agree. You can make calculations based on measurements, taking averages and trying to weigh out errors. And the more the distances of your observation, the more the errors exist. That's I how we do I asked a yes or no question. Can and your you use answer optics is to make measurements? No, that's no. calculations. You don't make optical measurements. Optical measurements, they're also a conspiracy. Thank you. No, no, no. I'll have no, to. No, I, I ended the question. <laughs> okay. That's actually, you know, like the way it works is you it's, get the It's last okay word. if he responds, but I'll yeah. still let, like, I will always come back to you, William. I am for sorry. The last word. What's it, so, please? Like, the audience is here for it, guys. Like, continue to communicate. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Like, so, so, like, for example, geodetic surveying claims that they make measurements with optics, right? But really, what they do is they look over vast distances and whatever they're looking at fluctuates. So they take averages, they have a weighted mean, they have a tolerance window, they throw certain observations out that don't fit within it, they do a calculation to get a weighted mean average, and then they sit, try to put it into their assumed model. That is not a physical measurement, okay? That is so, a calculation, then that is actually just a weighted mean average. There is a fundamental difference in those two things. Gotcha. So, can, so you cannot make measurements with optics, is what you're saying? Oh, you cannot make direct measurements with long distance gotcha. optics. No. Like, oh, look, now you're moving the goalposts a little bit, huh? There, bud. No, long no. distance? That's an addition. Well, that's what we're talking about. Invoked. Optics. I was just being oh. more specific because you invoked long well, distance. You weren't optics. being specific before, but now you want to be specific. So, which one is it? Optics or long distance optics? Optics those in are general. Those two different things. I think yeah. perfect, perfect. I'm so happy. So, so optics in general, no measurements can be assembly be taken. Those are uh, not physical. What, what devices were they using in Mickels and Morley? Uh, the, the, those were interfer interferometry light beams and light they beams. were, yeah, they weren't measuring sizes and distances. Mm -hmm. What they were doing is actually getting an interference pattern based yeah. on, based on so, motion so and displacement. Right. And they were using light beams. And so what field of physics is that usually referred to as light beams? Optics. And they were using them to make measurements. 
Yes, but that's not the same as observation. Oh, okay. is it? I didn't say observation. I said measurement, didn't I? You invoked observation. I asked you, can you make measurements using optics? And you said no. And yeah, now yeah, you're changing use... your mind. You're contradicting yourself yet again. Thank you. Specifically light, which is the technical term for it is optics as a field. Yes. But can you make measurements using observations? No. All right. So we've got a lot of super chats coming. Yeah. So William, last word is yours. And we're going to get to the next. He question. contradicted himself again, folks. He's contradicted himself like 10 times in this debate. I don't know what else to tell you. This man is selling you something. He's selling you a... Uh, what's that phrase? It's only a bridge in somewhere that can't have a bridge. He's selling you a con. Thank you. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, we generally don't like to uh, comment on our debaters' appearance. Um, however, I feel like this is good-hearted and, and, and okay. That's mean. Uh, oh, if wits okay. it will um, entertain us. Uh, did did you? You can read whatever if it's about me, bro. I don't care. It, did you get a little sun over the holidays, my friend? Yeah, I did the day. I did the day. <laughs> the whole chat is um, loving yeah. the red hue. You got that glow. Um, Looks good. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, they spent five bucks just ask like, wow, you're so red. And Yeah, I, I, I got sun today. Yeah, I didn't think you would mind and that wouldn't be super. Nah. All right, uh, LJ, big supporter tonight, LJ, and Kango, of course. Dollar uh, ninety nine. So LJ, this will be for you, William, most likely. Do you feel you are spinning, or is the ground stationary? Oh man, do I feel like I'm spinning, or does it feel like it's stationary? It feels like it's stationary, and also Newtonian physics is wrong. Okay. Yeah. So question. Yeah. Go so. Yeah. All right. So no, you question. wanted to respond. The, okay, the super question. chats, the super chats are really coming in now. You guys have got them all yeah. uh, with questions. So let's get to it. Uh, can go $44, $5 question for Witsit. Is sun cream part of the big pharma conspiracy? Oh, that actually sounds yes. really about as sun Yes, Sorry. yes, it is. Sorry, it literally is. <laughs> yeah, no, please read all of them. Yes, it literally okay. is, though, because they've been tied directly to cancer. And oftentimes they put things like, uh, like, heavy metals inside of them, right? Like certain types of oxidated metals that have been tied directly to cancers. So you can look it up, right? Uh, nitride, I, I don't know exactly which metal it is, but something oxide, just look it up. It's ridiculous, the stuff that they put, even if for coloring, like Skittles and stuff, they put that same heavy metal in uh, sunscreen. But you can use things like coconut oil, which I clearly didn't do, okay? I, I, I forgot, but you can use coconut oil and it's good for you. Sunscreen is bad for you, absolutely. And I suggest not to use it. You know what else is time to cancer? You're good Sunburns. So allegedly. <laughs> All right. Um, anyways, let's let's refrain from any more of those kind of questions if we can. But uh, what's it? Thank you for being a good sport, though. Oh, titanium uh, oxide. Yeah. Sorry. Oof. All right. Scary. <laughs> uh, Ozean talks five dollars. Hey, what's it? Good to see you again. Why, when the electric current switches direction, do things not float, especially in some reverse lightning strikes? Okay. Um, the overall electric field of the earth never switches. Okay. There are isolated areas that can fluctuate. And uh, even when the lightning looks like it's going up, it's actually an area like above the surface that then meets up to the differential above it. But anyway, uh, the object itself has a density, right? And so that's the compactness of matter or uh, volume and mass, right? And of course, because mass is volume times density. So anyway, the point is that what actually holds the matter together is the compactness of matter is held together by electrostatic charges. So that's what holds it together. It has a relationship with the medium, right? And then we call that buoyancy. If that if that exists, that buoyant force is significantly stronger than the 10 micro micro amps per square meter that comes from the sky. And when, when so in order to make something float, you're going to have to introduce a lot of electrostatics or a lot of electric charge to overcome that weight. Okay, that's all it is. You have to overcome the weight or the buoyant relationship. Uh, and the electric field of the earth never flips, right? It's overall, there's always energy coming from the sky to the ground. And, and no one ever answers. If there's a downward electric current on the earth, would that create a downward bias? That's that's my question that Globers are just afraid to answer. All right, next question. It's LJ again. Another dollar ninety nine. You ready, William? Please. Why doesn't Earth spin under a hovering helicopter? That is a great question, and I think it was asked in good faith too. Uh, so the reason why airplanes and hovering helicopters uh, 
move with reference to the earth as an inertial frame is because helicopters and airplanes are already moving with the earth and they have the angular momentum that the earth has already given it by it being on the surface of it. So you can look at the earth and not feel the motion just like what if you're in a helicopter and you don't see the motion of the earth because you are already moving along with it and you are don't feel any angular force because you have been feeling it you've been going that way already so does the air move in lockstep with the earth uh no because wind oh so then you feel wind gonna, right so it's not just going to keep moving with the earth because the air most of it moving. does but the air isn't doing it I said most of it does. What's it? Oh, so it's close, but no cigar. I got it. Yes, that's what a lot of science is. What's it? Pay attention. Thanks. <laughs> you just gave like a first grade explanation of something super basic. Chill out. I know it was a first grade explanation, was it? Of a first grade concept. Yeah, but he's pointing out the intrinsic I, I contradiction. Don't, I don't think this exchange is really going anywhere. Probably um, not. You're right. Yeah. Uh, are we okay to move on, William? Or do you got another word? For oh, us? you're good. Let's, let's keep going. Okay. Um... Kango 44. So Kango and LJ, like you guys, thanks for coming. You're always here. You're always super chatting. Massive channel supporters. We can't deny that. The best. We um, love them. Yeah. So Kango 44, which means this question's for Witsit. Uh, we have thousands of images of Earth from space. You can't even begin to show that any of them are fake, which makes your whole argument ridiculous. Dude, they're admittedly CGI. How can someone still be around the convo? Look, I'm going to say this really quick. This is what happened to me. Someone said the earth was flat. I thought it was the stupidest thing I'd ever heard. Okay. So I was like, dude, we have probably millions of pictures of earth from space. I'm just going to go Google them. Okay. So I went to just quickly disprove flat earth and look at the earth from space. And what did I find out? That the famous picture that was on everyone's iPhone of the earth from space actually wasn't a picture. It was actually CGI, admittedly. And I found the person saying that we it was just artwork, basically. He painted on top of it, and they took flat earth pictures and wrapped it around the ball. I'm like, this is super weird. And I'm, then I found out the last real picture that was supposedly from space was from 1972 Apollo missions. Of course, I already knew that those were fake. So then I fell down the rabbit hole. That's the first thing. If you're still claiming that they're real, that's highly suspect, bro. All right. Thank you. What's it? Next question. LJ again, dollar ninety nine. I promise there's super chat from other people. Just these two gentlemen were they were there right from. We the love these two gentlemen. Keep it coming. <laughs> uh, what's the proof of Jupiter's mass, size, and gravity? Mass, size, and gravity. I'm guessing that's for me. Um, <laughs> so you can tell an object's gravity and mass by. Really, the only way to make any observation is to test how it interacts with things around it. You can tell the Jupiter's mass by observing the all sorts of the gravitational effects it has when it's orbiting the sun, as well as the orbits of the moons around it. You can tell how much mass it has by seeing how massive the moon is and how much the Jupiter moves in the orbit compared to the moon. There's many different ways you can measure mass of planets, and that's just one of them. All right, thank you. Um, Enlightenment, Enlightenment Tuxen sends 15 bucks. It's their first ever super, and they didn't put a question on there. Um, but I see that they are uh, active, and they have a lot of other questions coming up here in a second. But their first ever was just a throw at us of 15 bucks. Very next question is Paul Brassfield, $10.00. Cargo ships leaving Long Beach, California, take a straight route to Hong Kong. They do not take a constant starboard turn to get there. How is that possible on a flat Earth map? Please explain. Assume this is for Witsit. I, 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 did he, I, mi I missed exactly where he said yep. they went. So they do not take a constant starboard. Sorry, my, I'm, I'm getting pasty here. They do not take a constant starboard turn to get there how is that possible on a flat earth map please explain i'm sorry i'm asking like what was the flight it's a flight it's i'm a guessing boat, cargo boat. ships leaving oh. long beach california take okay. a straight route to hong kong and they That's do it. not take a starboard turn in other words they don't turn yeah 
Can you explain? That's that? kind of a crazy question because that doesn't exist. So when you navigate, you can't go straight. That literally doesn't exist, right? Like if you, if it's even proven, you can't even walk perfectly straight for like a hundred yards. So we're constantly correcting with a compass. Okay. And typically we even use GPS. So in a boat, you're never going perfectly straight. You're constantly updating relative to your, your compass. And typically in a boat, you actually use magnetic declination corrections, right? So the compass will read one thing, but you'll have to make a major correction or you wouldn't get where you're going. You don't ever just go straight from one place to one place. That isn't how navigation works. No, but if you were to go straight on a globe, it would be turning for a flat earth. You would agree. Yeah, you would have a geodesic path, yeah. Right, that's the point of the question, is if you're turning, if you're going in a, quote, straight path on the globe model, you'd have to be turning constantly for the flat Earth model, and you don't. That's the point of the question. No, he said they go straight, and objectively, they are constantly updating relative to their compass. So if you were gradually turning, you wouldn't even know it. That's how navigation works. You guys act like they would have to cut, like they're going around a sharp turn the whole time. That isn't how it would work at all. You would basically be going straight, just slightly updating relative to your compass and magnetic declination. It's a crazy question. It's also just in, completely inaccurate to claim that they went straight anywhere. They absolutely did not. Yes, there's a difference in the paths on a flat earth and a globe. <laughs> we get it. That doesn't, doesn't prove that they did one way or the other. All right. Thank you. Enlightenment Tucson. Uh, that last word is going to be a tricky one for me. Anyways, the gentleman that said $15 earlier uh, throws $5. Um, uh, he acknowledges Globers. So this question is probably for you, William. Why do Globers reject government docs state Flat, not rotating Earth. An analogy, I want to make an apple pie. Can you pass me those bananas? Uh, so I don't know what he's referencing in terms of the documents that we um, deny exist. Yeah, the question's a little tricky to understand, but I do understand the part of he says there are government docs that state that the Earth is flat, not rotating. Are there any documents like that you're ignoring, William? Man, I would love to know about those docs. Send them in the chat. Thank you. No, I also love the apple pie comment. That was funny. Um, Wisco Matt, $5. Wits it. What is the three body problem? That's the mathematical problem that no one can actually work out uh, the gravitational relationship and motion between three different bodies at one time. You have to break it up into two and they'll just say, oh, well, yeah, but you can do it just by breaking it up into two. And then it's greatly debated about if it's even possible with three. So that's basically a really lame in terms explanation. Thank you, sir. Free, free Palestine, $5. Flat Earth equals science. Spinning ball lost in vacuum equals pseudoscience. Be smarter. Avoid globe lies. Avoid pseudoscience vaccines too. Um, I'd love to respond to that. So again, I would just love to push up again. I kind of should have read the question of the part about vaccines. If you uh, yeah, I was going to say, keep that, keep that part that. like, keep that part hush, William. I don't know if you're familiar yeah. with the... I wasn't going to talk about go that. Go ahead. Yeah, cool. Just making sure. Carry That's on. That's okay. Um, just keep constantly pushing Oxum's Razor to the very forefront of your mind. Either all of the universe is wrong and all scientists are liars, or you don't have all the information. One of those is far more simple of an explanation than the other one. I got I to gotta respond to this real quick. Like, no one thinks all scientists are wrong, bro. That's poisoning the well. No one thinks that. You're going to think that this guy who says that the Earth is geocentric is a PhD in physics. You're going to think he's wrong. When I show you this other guy who has a PhD in physics says that the Earth is geocentric, you're going to say he's wrong. And when I show you Robert Bennett with a PhD in physics who wrote his thesis on the rigid motion of bodies and relativity says the Earth is geocentric, you're going to say that he's wrong. When I, sh I can show you all kinds of scientists that do experiments and think that the Earth's not moving and that there's an ether, blah, blah, blah. So not all scientists think anything. Okay, we don't think all scientists are wrong. We think that mainstream science is archaic, outdated, and dishonest about when things are disproven, and everyone believes things that are not true. There isn't some big elaborate conspiracy where people are in on a lie. They just believe the lie, bro. So, I mean, come on. You're right. What's it? I shouldn't have said all scientists. I should have said 99.99% of all scientists believe the Earth is a globe, and they're all wrong or lying to you. 
Either all of those people are wrong or lying to you, or you as an individual do not have all of the information. One of those is far more simple than the other one. Occam's Razor. All right. Next question. Five dollars. Wisco Matt again for Witsit. What is dark matter and dark energy? And why do they claim 95% of the universe is made up of it? Yeah, so really quickly, um, if you assume gravity, uh, th what it says is if there's a certain amount of mass, then there's a certain amount of gravity. So when they looked at the sky, assuming that's true, they found out that there is way too much gravity without the mass needed. So gravity can't be true. So instead of being like, okay, obviously our belief in gravity is wrong, they said, oh, there must be something there that's undetected, undefined. No one can even figure out what it could be theoretically. And we'll put it in mathematically. It was discovered in 1933 by Fritz Sawicki. He saw the galaxy cluster was actually keeping all the galaxies inside the cluster when there wasn't, uh, only, there was only 1% of the mass predicted by gravity to be able to keep it in there. So instead of saying I'm wrong, they just added 99% made up mass. And that's dark matter. Dark energy is that the accelerative expansion of the universe required to explain why it just looks like the earth is in the center of the universe. And it's just a major illusion going back to Edwin Hubble in 1925, I believe it was, uh, that in order for something to be accelerating, some say four to eight times faster than the speed of light. Now the universe is supposedly accelerating. Uh, then you have to have some energy source to make it accelerate. It's called a cosmological constant giving the Hubble constant and no one knows what it is. Can't find it. When we have vacuum energy on the earth and tried to assume it's in space, it was off by 10 to the 120th power. So those are the dark matter and dark energy problems. Side note, a geocentric model has a kinematic and dynamic equivalence and validity, but does not have the dark matter or dark energy problem, which means it's actually at least 96% more viable than a heliocentric big bang cosmology. So that's rough. So dark matter does not, well, I guess, I don't know if I should be responding if we're short on time with the questions. You're, it's your guys' okay. time. You okay. can respond. Just when you do respond, with will have the last the word, word for sure. Um, no, dark matter does not disprove gravity. Um, gra or sorry, does not. Well, yeah, it doesn't disprove gravity because dark matter acts like matter. It acts like the thing we define matter as, which is something that creates gravity. So it doesn't defy all of physics. It's acting like mass, but it's absent of what we normally see also associated with mass, which is visibility. We don't see it. We can't detect it with other instruments, but it's still mass because it's still acting as imposing of gravity on things. It doesn't discredit all of the other gravitational equations we've measured throughout our entire existence as human beings. It's still mass. Uh, what's it last word yeah, that's called a reification fallacy it's like i assume gravity is true so even though i can't detect it i'm just going to assume it's true and act like it's there and you're attributing qualities to it uh, tons of people don't even think in mainstream physics don't even think dark matter is a thing it's that's why they're proposing modified newtonian dynamics there's over 200 published papers on nasa's own database trying to replace the version of gravity that requires dark matter okay so there's no evidence for it. it is a major problem it's because no gravity will ever work if it's proportionate to mass but you know what would work something electromagnetic because i can have two magnets that are the same size right the same exact mass but one can be way stronger than the other one so your limited proportion of mass because of your spherical assumption dark matter is a major problem in cosmology uh and it's actually even been falsified uh with sigma phi confidence with dark matter halos so dark matter can exist even in your own paradigm. So yeah, it is a problem. Either rel either relativity and your gravity is wrong or there's something magical there that we can never find and we have to just assume is true. So, uh, you know, to each their own, I guess. Thanks, was it? Ted Lacoca, 499. Looking at the center of rotation, you cannot have clock and anti-clockwise, okay? wise motion um i feel like that's for me. i know it is <laughs> the way they yeah. typed it was a little that's bit off um, supporting my point that's for me uh, okay so then it's for what's it <laughs> yeah but yeah you absolutely can if it's so if, if everything is say everything is spinning one way okay and when you look out just like how a hallway looks like it's converging right that's what happens in the sky. The ground looks like it's ramping. Or, yeah, the ground looks like it's ramping up. The sky looks like it's ramping down. So the sky is going to kind of look like it's coming down in the distance. If it's spinning 
So in the north, it spins counterclockwise, right? If you turn around and looked at it, it would look like it's going clock, uh, yeah, clockwise. This is just a fact. The argue, the best argument for the globe would be, yeah, but why is there a a pole rotation? Okay, that's the argument that you guys, why is there actual a, a, a central point that the stars are moving around the opposite way? The actual appearance of the opposite way isn't a problem at all for flat Earth. It's easily explained with perspective. That's what happens. And I also answered the other part as well, which I gave crepuscular and anticrepuscular rays, and it was hand wave dismissed. But anyway. The crepuscular and anticrepuscular rays do not address the problem in any way. As I have described to you, we know it's spinning in counterclockwise and clockwise directions, two different directions, then depending on the location you're at. And you literally showed your model, and the only way you could explain it is for the light to literally bend over backwards to justify observation, which is how much more of an assumption do you need than literally bending over backwards? Occam's razor, forefront of your mind. Again, that isn't true. We did address the whole thing that the model doesn't even show the real stars. And I said there's multiple explanations. It's not complicated. One more time. Just like when the sun's setting in the west, you see crepuscular rays. If you look east, 180 degrees away, you will see anti-crepuscular rays where it looks like the sun's over there, but it's not. The sun's all the way in the west. It's just a, something that happens with perspective. It's just a well-known phenomena, okay? And this is why Stellarium maps it out in an azimuthal grid. We take measurements. It creates an optical dome based on our limit. So long story short, we see in visual, curved visual space, there's been tons of experiments. And yes, that would give you optical convergence around a singular point. I, and I don't understand why people don't understand that all the stars move east to west, but you have clockwise and counterclockwise, which are optical. Okay, they're relative to perspective. They're not the same as cardinal directions. You can verify this with demonstration, man. I'm really happy Woodset brought up that model again. I remembered, remember everybody, go to that model. I told, I said what the name of the model was in the beginning. Go to that model, use it, read everything the Glober who made it said about it. Please, I encourage everyone to. You got uh, okay, yeah, yeah, it's all good. I don't care. Okay, cool. Um, that brings us to... Uh, to Tasaka, 10 pounds. Wits it. Do we echolocate with our eyes? Is that why we have a limit to our vision? Do we, do we echolocate? With our eyes. Uh, That's an interesting I, idea. Um, uh, what I just do, what I do know is that we've done tests that have shown that we see in curved visual space. So I'm just taking the evidence for what it is. You know, it's just a fact. Most people think that we see in Euclidean geometry, so meaning perfectly straight lines, but it's been proven that we don't. We see in non-Euclidean geometry, we have hyperbolic visual space based on different distances it even changes. In fact, they had to figure this out for very precise robotics in the last few years because the robots were not accurately denoting visual space, assuming Euclidean geometry. They had to update it to very specific curved visual space learning models to teach the robotics to work. Okay, so there's many tests that show we see in curved visual space, and we we have a limit based on that curvature of visual space. Uh, so yeah, that's I don't know exactly what the, the other idea that you're suggesting, but I wish people would research some of this stuff. You know, like instead of just assuming we're making it up, just just look it up. Look up curved visual space. Thank you, sir. Um, this next question, I'm going to read it, uh, but I'm just going to mention to the uh, super chatter that. Um, and you're pushing just a t just a touch on the last word here, but I'll read this one. Uh, please just try to be a little bit more uh, respectful. So try verifying the distance between us and Polaris 432 light years ago. Be honest, dear CGI globe lover, you can't because it's pseudoscience. And then the globe diarrhea is what I the word I kind of diarrhea didn't Whoa. really want to put out there out of line Let's I mean it it's my feelings I mean it's honest. minor but I'm just saying let's we're, we're getting to a line anyways uh William that question is clearly for you um parallax uh that is one of the best ways to determine the distance from stars you can also use uh different types of interferometry um there's multiple different ways to tell distance to, from stars, but parallax, please look it up. All right. Razor Robertson, $2. Will 
please come to the after show. Amazing performance. Thank Those you, guys. I like reading. Um, Wisco Matt, $5. Wits it. If you can use <laughs> You like how this is a game show for me? Hey, wits it. <laughs> <laughs> if you can use a vacuum to pull air away from my floor, why does that much stronger space vacuum not pull everything off the earth? Vacuums, of course, don't actually pull, right? The gas just fills the available space in the second law of thermodynamics. But uh, yeah, that's clearly an alley-oop to me because uh, they can't explain it. They actually claim some of the gas does go into space by tons and tons. But just, I guess some of it does, some doesn't. So good good point that a, even a smaller vacuum is going to have the gas fill it on the earth. If you put a shoebox with gas inside of a uh, vacuum chamber and open the lid, it's going to violently escape Right. But somehow we have this this ever expanding limitless vacuum around us and the gas pressure of the atmos is just sitting there. So, yeah, second law of thermodynamics, the gas would fill the available space if their model was true. It doesn't. And of course, again, the electric field being vertical and uniform and equipotential proves that there's a physical Gaussian surface above us also debunking the vacuum claim. I'm, I'm so happy you brought up the um, atmosphere again. I want to push this this proof one last time. Um, and I want to ask you about this, what's it, if the globe was true and if gravity was real, um, would gas molecules made of atoms and matter, would it be attracted to the globe? Uh, no, because your model claims gravity is not a force, but if in, in, okay, my... I guess that, I guess, no. Yeah, cool. no, Ga gas goes straight up. It goes in all directions, <clears throat> omnidirectional dispersal. He's displaying, he doesn't understand what gravity means. He doesn't understand the argument. Well, I understand the argument very well. You would claim that the kinetic velocity of the kinetic energy of the gas overtakes the slight bias created by the Earth pulling, but that's how you would say it, which is For not correct. For how long would that would that bias override gravity? The not Earth forever. The Earth doesn't actually pull according to your model. It's the bending and warping of space time. But what we're yes, I will say a force could, in theory, prevent gas from leaving somewhere if strong enough, right? In My theory, man. but you would You're have to best. actually you. But that's just in theory. You would have to actually replicate that with a demonstration, which cannot be done. You have to actually have you have to have plasma in order to even kind of do it, and it still has to be within an overall container. And we use magnetic fields. We know that gravity is not even remotely close to that strong. So, the so you have a major you have a major problem. You have the physical oh. antecedent to gas pressure pressure is to press on physical containment. And until you can verify a demonstration otherwise, it's a baseless claim flying in the face of the second law of thermodynamics. And that's not negotiable. You don't get to argue against the second law. Let's explore your claim that you just made. So if in theory, the, the particles would be attracted to the earth and it would not go on forever, it eventually would be clung to the planet. You said that. Could you, in theory, then take different measurements of different altitudes of this atmosphere and you would have different pressures at different atmospheres, at different, sorry, at different heights in the atmosphere because the part that's closer to the Earth is being pulled more and the part that's further away from the Earth is being pulled less. Therefore, it would be less pressurized further right. away. Would that make sense in this theory? Yes, if we were to entertain something that actually violates the second law of thermodynamics, then you could theorize an explanation for the gradients. So we're pressure talking about can be observed in a vacuum without a container in this theory that we're making up. Oh, that's yeah, but that's called begging the question. You're just affirming the consequent. We're talking about the I gas pressure. I said it was pressure. a theory. You said theory. Yeah. We're talking about the gas pressure here. Is it physically possible? And the second law of thermodynamics says it's not possible. And I didn't you could say have here. I said in theory. The only oh. way to have a gas pressure gradient is to have gas pressure inside of a container. Well, you just contradicted yourself. Thank you. I didn't. You did because you said it, if gravity was true, you would not need a container for gravity to cling to the surface. That's of the not planet. what I said. You said that. I Rewind I the tapes. The, I want to put. I, well, we're not rewinding live here, but I want to no, put I the mean, question to bed. The audience. Will it, I'll let you. I'll let yeah. you respond. And uh, okay, real quickly to clarify, what I actually said was. If we were to entertain a theory, and not a scientific one, that contradicts the second law of thermodynamics, which is obviously saying that it's impossible, it's not on the table to debate, to, to actually quote Arthur Eddington, <laughs> you know, if you go against the second law of thermodynamics, you're best, basically destined to oblivion, your theory has no chance. It's a natural law, it's not debatable, so 
no, I don't believe in the fairy tale. Show a demonstration. We can prove that it escapes and goes into a vacuum on the earth where gravity would be the strongest. So that's a you problem. All right, next question. Run Boston Bear 499. William, can you provide any exclusive evidence that the sun is 93 million miles away? <clears throat> so... The distance from the Earth to the Sun. How do we know this distance? I'm trying to remember the proof on the top of my head. I, I can tell you. Do it. So the two the two most pro popular claims is um, that they sent radar to the Sun in like the '60s, a radar bounce. Seems logical. And, yeah, and then some will say you could technically try to use trigonometry to look at the transit of Venus. Right. And to then deduce like a full transit of Venus across the face of the sun to try to deduce. Uh, but even NASA will tell you that's not actually like tenable or realistic. You have to have way too long of a baseline. Uh, you have to have like incredible synchronization. And then the actual optical resolution that we even have access to today isn't good enough to do that. Plus uh, atmospheric and temperature uh, disturbances cause that to be impossible. And then, of course, the radar bounce didn't work. They admitted in the paper which has never been done again since the 60s, that they couldn't even di differentiate between the radar bounce, like the echoes, and the solar noise. So they actually, it was unsuccessful. So both of mm. the main things I've ever heard are like, they don't work. Thank you, Witson. Yeah. Okay. So that, oh, I'll actually, that can a... I add one last point to that? Of course you can, because it's your question. This is how people should communicate with each other. We need to acknowledge when we don't know something and cooperate with each other to figure things out. We should never establish some kind of undeniable godlike ability to know everything because once you have established that, you have now fallen down the rabbit hole of manipulation. I don't know everything. I'm not the god of science. There are things I absolutely do not know. And Witsit should admit he's the same way. Um, of course. And I think that's uh, I think that's how it should always be. Thank you. I think, I think flat earthers are way more like that. We admit we don't even know the size or anything. You guys think you know what's 4,000 miles down. Is it? Just give me kind of 10, 10 seconds to show this picture to everyone. You guys tell me what you think. Uh, is the sun 93 million miles away? And if it was, wouldn't we have parallel light rays? And if we did, could we have a localized hot spot on the clouds from 100,000 uh, 100, feet up in a high altitude balloon? We have a, a localized hotspot directly under the sun if it was actually 93 million miles away with evenly distributed parallel light rays. And I would tell you that the answer is, of course, no, that you cannot. Well, my answer would be, of course, yes. There's all sorts of things that could make that hotspot atmospheric effects. Um, even just a smudge on the camera could easily make such an effect. Um, just because it's parallel and this image doesn't disprove anything about the globe this is what you'd expect to see when you send a camera out there all right um that was your I'm question just, yeah it was his question and you know what to be honest uh this next question kind of will let you guys probably roll into this a little bit more um from the same super chatter run boston bear another 499 says william can you provide any exclusive evidence that the earth orbits around the sun okay 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 i know this one <clears throat> Parallax, that is that that is one piece of evidence for it rotating around the sun. Um, retrograde motion of the planets is also evidence of that because those orbits of those planets show that they are orbiting the sun. So it but it would only show it's orbiting the sun if we're also orbiting the sun. So you'd have to make that connection there. Uh, solar rotation, you can see the sun rotating as you literally orbit it. Um, and of course, the seasons, considering that the Earth is tilted, that is additional uh, proof that we orbit the sun. Thank you. Literally, none of those are actually exclusive evidence. Of course, it's not. For, it's like, not at all. I'm just going to tell you real fast that that question actually comes from my show, Schooling Globers. It was the first question we asked, like, can you provide any exclusive evidence that the Earth orbits the sun? And mm -hmm. it's obviously because I know the typical answers of parallax, you didn't even mention aberration, and retrograde. 
And admittedly, if you actually do your research and understand mm. the kinematic equivalence, none of those things prove that we're moving around the sun. In fact, relativity requires you say the same thing would happen if the earth was stationary. I explained the neotyconic model. I explained that the stars could just even slow down or the planets could even slow down in relation to the background stars. So none of those things are exclusive evidence. The seasons also are not. The sun is either moving on an ecliptic plane or it's just an illusion because we're tilted, right? But then the cosmic wave background actually show the distribution at 23.4 degrees way beyond on the local system, proving that the earth isn't locally tilted. Long story short, there is a kinematic equivalence. Everything that you just named is just kinematically equivalent on a stationary earth. None of that is exclusive evidence that the earth orbits the sun. In fact, that doesn't exist. You're sending, you're setting me off. Uh, what's it? I want to talk about, um, the philosophy of knowledge for a second. Um, you can never know anything with absolute certainty and when you keep saying exclusive evidence for something, um, mm -hmm. that is not a realistic expectation to make any kind of requirement for any kind of theory. If I see someone walk in my house, there is no exclusive evidence that he walks into my house. My eyes could just be playing a trick on me the whole time. I can always dig a deeper for another question that denies that that person is walking around in my house. I can always dig deeper and deeper and find itself you know, that I don't actually know the thing, epistemology. Um, mm -hmm. But you have to eventually admit what is and isn't more reasonable. And that's the purpose of Occam's razor. It is far more reasonable that everything we observe, parallax, retrograde, starlow rotation, seasons, all those things add together to paint a picture. You can't look at one piece of evidence and make a conclusion out of it. You have to look at it all and then make a decision. Yeah. Thank you. That's called the preponderance of evidence. And if we apply Occam's razor to the preponderance of evidence, all astronomical observations make the earth look like it's in the center of the universe. Your model claims that that's an illusion because everything's accelerating and expanding in all directions, even though they can't figure out what energy is causing it. And we have the Hubble constant or the Hubble uh, tension problem where they don't match up. The measurements don't match up because they have to say, oh, it's a giant illusion that the earth's in the center of the universe. Occam's razor would say, all astronomical observations show the Earth in the center of the universe because it's in the center of the universe. Not that space and time bend and warp and time stretches and slows down and the universe is accelerating, expanding. You just can't really tell and that there's something mass magical there that no one can find that's making it happen. And that's not Occam's razor. So Occam's razor is that the Earth is in the center, to quote Edwin Hubble, a central position of Earth can never be disproven. We avoid it at all costs because the idea of a special and unique position is intolerable and horrific. Okay, so it's a philosophical decision. And yeah, I mean, I just I wish you would look into that. I, I actually think you're probably pretty cool, man. And I, I think that you should look into it. I think you should watch the documentary, The Principle. You should actually look into the geocentric position and find out the truth is that your own model admits that all of those things you listed work just as well on a stationary earth. So you're pretty cool. Going. You're pretty cool too, wits it. Um it's just a shame you feed your followers a bunch of misinformation to benefit yourself because you 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 have a lot of incentives to do such a thing as I discussed in my beginning argument. Um, but no, I I'll use one example to try to make it as quantized as possible. Retrograde motion. Retrograde motion is obviously would be clearly observable if we were orbiting our sun and those other planets were orbiting the same sun. That is hands down obvious look at the presentation i made it makes it clear as crystal but wits it says yes that would explain it uh but no that's not it looks it's just going across the sky just because it goes in that direction and that orientation does not mean it's that way it just happens to be set up to look exactly like as if it's orbiting the same star as us. That's literally what you're claiming with the, the accelerating universe is claiming it just happened set up the exact way to make the earth look like it's in the center of the whole universe. And we're talking about the vast majority of the universe, not just the little solar system. So that's a way more you problem. You think that most of the universe is conspiring to deceive everyone on the earth with all astronomy to make it look like we're in the center. That's what your position says. So the neotyconic system, the tyconic system came before your belief that we fly around the sun. What interferometry measured it stationary? So we don't even have to speculate about which one makes more sense. One's been measurably proven with interferometry. 
my my all of my arguments look back at the tape all my arguments have been based on observation comparing two different things to each other mine is not based on authority or any one individual who's lying who could be lying to me mine is all about observation every single observation was consistent with my model and it would have been a completely different observation with his model one of them has Occam's razor on its side. The other one doesn't. Let the audience decide. Yeah. All right. Um, so just to give you guys a state of where we're at, uh, so far with just about every super chat I ask, we've been getting like two more. So uh, hmm. the, the exchanges are great. Everyone's here for it. Uh, but it's you guys that are on your clocks. So let's uh, let's keep going, shall we? Brian Peck, $2, six quadrants. Are you sure about that, Witsit? No, of course not. That's why I said that's just one of the uh, potential explanations that someone has shown is viable with actual demonstration. So I don't I don't know exactly how everything works. That's the whole point. Just like he said, only that's that's actually what I say all the time. And actually to, to address the grifting idea, like I lost an incredibly good paying job because I wouldn't take flat earth videos off the internet. The notion that I do this for money is hilarious but anyway you know i mean i didn't say you made much money i actually lost the ability to make much money so you gained other things what fellowship oh so you think it's like an ego thing that people follow me and i would rather be poor to make sure that happens you said it not me that's crazy that you think that's the case but okay it has happened I don't, before. I, I don't want to go any further down down this path it's not even on topic yeah, but it was like three slides in a row. He said it, so I mean, no, I just I, I addressed don't, it. I don't. Yeah, I don't disagree. And the slides would have just kept coming back and forth. So, let's, yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, Witsit has a, a great following, and they're all here in the chat tonight. And he brings it with them, and we're all here to watch the both of you, and we're all having a great time. So it doesn't really matter. That's all good. That. Um, Run Boston Bears sends four ninety nine to ask you both a question. Um, so since he names William first, I'll let William go, and then I'll let Witsit go, and we'll just stop it there. Can high-frequency radio waves and microwaves propagate through the curvature of the Earth? If not, how are they sent so far in tests? So I'll let I William answer first. Can I share my screen real quick? Sure. So I am so happy that someone was able to give me the opportunity to actually show the many other slides I have, which if anyone is interested, please just pause it at any one of these locations because you can read a lot that supports all of my theories. Um, so this is the one. Uh, yes, frequency, these radio frequencies that you describe absolutely can go much farther than you would intuitively believe. No, they are not limited by the horizon all the time. They can go much further. Uh, it's mainly due to, you guessed it, Refraction, absolutely. Um, on a very basic level, you can see a clear refractive refraction effect just with your eyes on a normal basis based on the weather conditions of the planet. But with an even slightly more complicated weather condition, different locations of the hot and cold atmosphere, you can actually have a bending of light that goes down and then starts bending bounces off the earth and then starts bending right back down again. They're called trapped radio waves in the atmosphere. And this is not a, this is not just me handing waving concepts. Um, this is a absolute feature of refraction. That is one of the longest known sciences since hundreds of years ago. Um, also ionic waves do bounce off radio waves. This is 15 peer reviewed articles that support that. Thank you. All right. What's it? Your response? Um, yeah, I want to show one slide too, sure. real quick, and then I'll just. I think he has to stop first. Yep. Uh, let me stop. Yep. Um, Screen share is stopped. Don't crash. What's it? Yeah, I don't know why I did that. So annoying. Uh, Zoom Zoom does that to me all the time. You can see it. Yep. So uh, he brought up the ionosphere. That's a depiction of it on the top right. Uh, this started with Marconi. They sent transmission way too far for the globe. So. Aubrey Heaviside theorized there must be some ionized layer up there reflecting it back down. 
So I have here, the ionosphere is said to have a frequency range of up to 40 megahertz. And this ionized region of the Atmos allegedly reflects radio waves back down to the earth to explain why line of sight transmission far exceed the geometric limitation of the globe earth model. The world record transmissions ranging from 100 megahertz to upward of 100 gigahertz have been sent line of sight far beyond this assumed physical geometric limitation. These frequencies are far too high to reflect off the ionosphere, thus falsifying spherical Earth assumption. Actually, they go higher than 100 gigahertz. But if you look at the records, if the if the ionosphere is 40 megahertz, and it is true that that's if you have ionized gas, that's what plasma is. Plasma is ionized gas. If you shot a radio wave at it, it would bounce back. Right. But if you send a frequency that's higher, if it's a higher frequency than the plasma, it'll penetrate straight through it. Ironically, when they claim they send radar to the moon and all this stuff, they never have to worry about it bouncing back because they know it's higher than 40 megahertz. But when we send things line of sight over the earth horizontally, all of a sudden it's magically there. And then how convenient. Let's talk about Occam's razor real fast to close it out. Uh, we shoot it line of sight. It goes horizontally for thousands of miles. The globe claims that there's some magical ducting effect that's never been directly detected or measured and is theoretical and according to the military, very unreliable for any type of predictions. And it goes as if it was completely straight and horizontal over a completely straight and horizontal plane Earth. But really, it's an illusion. It's curving magically whenever we need it to. So there's no actual evidence that you could go thousands and thousands of miles with high frequency radio waves magically bending around the globe. And it's too high to bounce off the ionosphere because it would penetrate it due to the frequency. So long distance, high frequency transmissions of EMF, absolute are e like EM waves, refute the globe model. All right, I'm going to stop. Can I say one last Thank you, sir. Nope, no? nope. No, you can't. Nope. Sorry. I just really want to get going because uh, um, got a lot to go through. Uh, William, it's your first debate here. You've been fantastic. Uh, the chat is electric for you. You've done Thank you really. Guys. We've we've had a great time with both of you. What's guys. it? You've done great too, Tonight. man. Um, but yeah, we're super chats. We're getting behind, and that particular questioner uh, asked you both, so I allowed you both to answer. So no response. Um, Wes Fee or Fay F E. Five dollars. When the truth exposes lies and dishonesty, the demon festers like mealworms. Just look at chat. Earth is not a spinning water ball. Sorry, wits it wins. Um, don't think there was a question. I think someone was just uh, spiking the ball and for wits it. Uh, next, Joey B. Four ninety nine. William, do you believe in any conspiracies or do you just trust the government? The government lies to us. Absolutely. They've admitted to it to us many times. Um, I really don't want to conflate science with the government because the government is not the same thing as science. Um, so please don't conflate those two things. Uh, yes, conspiracies exist. We know this for a fact. Um, most modern day conspiracies, you should not jump down the rabbit hole of um, because if you use doctors, it's not reasonable to. Science can be wrong as well. Um, as we've seen in the past, but it doesn't mean it's not the most reasonable explanation for most things in our life. It doesn't mean you should write it off all as invalid just because it has been wrong in the past. And just to reassess all these truths and fictions one more time, I talked about things you should look into other than flat earth documentaries. There's other things you should look into. I don't know if we know what those were, but I would really suggest record the tape Rewind it, see what those things were, look them up, watch documentaries about those things to get a real mind-blowing experience that might completely reassess your perspective. Thank you. Enlightenment, uh, Tucson, $5 uh, for Witsit, who I hope is in earshot. Mm. Austin, can you explain the power of 10 to the 17 Tor next to the pressure system? They don't understand this. The Glober belief is scary. Yeah, like the the only vacuum we can even get remotely close to on the Earth is like 10 to the negative 7, I think. And it takes like immensely thick concrete walls with rebar and it still doesn't really work as far as insane maintenance. Um, but even in that situation, if you had a pressurized system, certainly like 14.7 PSI at the surface, right? It's going to violently fill the available space because entropy always increases. So with all natural systems, entropy increases. Therefore, the amount of usable energy decreases. It's going to fill the available space, violently seeking equilibrium. 
And so if we actually had a pressurized system on the earth and it was encompassed by this ever expanding vacuum of space, the gas would violently fill the available space. It has infinite space to fill. So you, according to the second law of thermodynamics, you literally could not have this gas pressure system we have on the earth that keeps us alive inside of a vacuum of 10 to the negative 17 tor. It could not be adjacent to that. It violates the second law of thermodynamics, which is the most indisputable and agreed upon natural law, which isn't a theory. It's just observation. It's a natural law. So it's a major glow problem. I really want everyone to rewind the tape about 15 minutes back where we were talking about this very fact about the atmosphere and how he admitted blatantly that the theory of gravity and the theory of the globe both together would in fact lead to atoms of mass would be pulled towards large massive bodies like planets, therefore creating some kind of gradient atmosphere. He did say this. He denies he says this now. So he'll deny I'll say it again, but he did say this. Rewind the tape. I trust you guys. Okay. No, I was answers. No, I literally didn't say that. What I said was, sure, if you wanted to entertain a theory that violates the second law of thermodynamics, then I understand your claim of a gradient. <laughs> That's what I actually said. Um, and no, gra gas goes in all directions. It doesn't get pulled down to the earth. There's omnidirectional dispersal of gas violently filling any and all available space where gravity is the strongest, which is the closest to center of mass at the surface of the earth. We can put a pressurized system of gas inside of a vacuum chamber. And if we open it up, right? Where gravity is the strongest, it will violently fill that vacuum. But when we get up higher and higher and the gravity gets weaker and weaker and the vacuum gets way, way stronger, all of a sudden it doesn't matter. It'll just sit there beside it. We don't have to worry about it. And that's not how it works. In order to have a pressure gradient, you have to have a container. Let's explore this one more time. So if in the context of- oh, I'd really like, honestly, William, you don't even see this list of super chats and we love to get through all of them. I trust um, you, man. You, yeah. You're well, right. I, yeah, this was so great. Maybe we'll set up a part two or something. But Ooh. you guys have raised the bar for 2024's debates this year. I can tell you, guarantee you that. It's an honor. Uh, so, Wisco Matt, $5, Witsit. Why does Mich forgive the name, I hope you'll understand what's it. Uh, Michio Kaku, professor of right. thermal theoretical physics, say <laughs> that there is a crisis in cosmology? Yeah, you said it right. In the context of that quote, he was specifically talking about what I covered earlier, which is like the dark energy problem, the cosmological constant problem, um, which is <clears throat> the more that we look out in, into the space, we see that the alleged measurements of the universe accelerating aren't matching up. And when we keep making measurements, it would need to go something like four to eight times faster than the speed of light. So you have to have some crazy strong energy to make like space itself and the universe expand that fast. But there is no energy to do it. And then what he was talking about is when we go into the, like on the quantum scale, we look at the electromagnetic vacuum. We see that there's energy in a vacuum, by the way, they're just, it's just an ether. But anyway, whenever they looked at that and measured it and then tried to apply that to the problem, it was off by 10 to 120th power. And he's like, that's the biggest discrepancy that's ever uh, existed. So yeah, he's talking about the dark matter, dark energy problem, specifically the cosmological constant problem. And it, it'll never be solved. Let's be real. So yeah, it's a major problem in the mainstream cosmology. All right, thank you, sir. Um, yeah, let's go, uh, oh, let's 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 uh, activate speed round a little bit and we'll just get through okay. these, all right? Don't wanna go for uh, five hours? <laughs> I'll go super fast, my bad. No, 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 you're- I'm answer, probably the one slowing you answer, down, to be it's, honest. No, it's, it's fine, it's I'll fine. Speed Our up. fans are here for it, we're all good. I'm just saying like, you know, we, we want to get to the end of the super chats. Um, your qu answer lengths are fine. You you answer the question you need to, the way you need to answer it. These people have paid money to hear your answer. Let's not necessarily short the answers. Let's just cut out the give and take and just go through it. Yeah. All right. Um, so this one, nominal $5, William, what percentage of imaginary matter does your accepted model require? God, you know, that is... I, I don't know how to answer that question. I'm 83%. so sorry. It's 80, 80, 83% of all 80. matter in the universe is supposedly dark matter. Oh, so you meant dark matter? Because I wasn't sure if imaginary was some other strange category. I, I did the air quotes. They typed it with quotes, imaginary matter. Um, okay. I mean, if you mean dark matter, yeah, a ton of it. Yes. Dark. Like 95%, I think. 83%. Toby Walker, $5. Why did the instrumental error recorded in Michel Michelson's Morley 
end up correlating with the <laughs> side reel motion of the sun when measured by Dayton Miller. So why did we saying why did the quote unquote instrumental error of Michelson Morley correlate with the sidereal motion of the sun when corroborated by Dayton Miller? That was it exactly, and this is why I can never debate this topic. Go ahead, whoever that question was for. <laughs> That's him. Okay. Um, I I don't know the exact technicalities of that experiment, and I'm not going to make up a false answer to try to make you think I'm some god of science because I don't know everything. So apologies. Valid answer. To the uh, chatter. Oh, that's so John, tempting, but I'll let it go. I'll let it go. Thank you, sir. John Mayoloya, $5. Uh, William, in good faith, would you admit you have a bias to your educational field and it could lead you down a stray path? I'm on a bias towards things that can be used repeatedly and observed consistently. So if you want to consider that a bias, Yes. Enlightenment Tucson, $5. I cannot explain the desperation of Harris um, bringing up the Mike Hughes. Wow. Do you realize you are making more true earthers? I'm so sorry. Can you repeat that one more time? Uh, basically, it sounds to me like uh, this person is challenging your arguments that it is actually um, convincing people of flat earth. Sam, why'd you bring up Mike uh, Hughes when it, when he's not actually a flat earther, that it'll make more people become true earthers to see that that's not true? Ah, uh, yes. Um, Mike Hughes, I really wanted to push that point point, make sure more people know about him because he is a product of the environment he was in. He was a follower of a theory and it was manipulated by people who led him down a path that he should not have been down that resulted in his wrongful death. And it proves that misinformation is more than just harm harmful, it's deadly. So people who push it know they're doing so in with malice and it's a, it's something that's it's a big problem in today's world. So I wasn't a flat earther, bro. We covered that. I don't know what you mean. That doesn't have, what are you talking about? Okay. All right. Daniel Summer, $10. Do you think the perspective dome would be a contributor to the reason why triangulation may be a challenge for estimating the height and distance to the sun and moon? Yeah, of course, because we see the apparent location of the sun. And also we don't know the, the composition of the medium between us and it right? Uh, presupposing solidity and the medium between us, the differential in the medium is going to also mess up uh, how we supposedly try to measure the distance to the sun. But yeah, we're seeing the apparent location, the sun, like provably so. So uh, yeah, you're not going to be able to just look at it and know how far away it is. It's insane. And even if you use triangulation, like you could say, oh, the sun and the moon, the sun is 10 times bigger than the moon and 10 times further away. Or you could say it's 400 times further away and 400 times bigger, right? It's just a ratio. Just like the first person that did it said it was like a, they were 11 times bigger, whatever. So yeah, long story short, yes, it would be a problem because we see the apparent location of the sun, not the actual position. All right. Um, and Congo 44 comes back $5 in response to our very first super chat. So to give you an idea of where we are in super chats. Um, in the Mr. Beast video, you see the sun, not just light, as the sun never sets in Antarctica. You do not see the sun for the full 24 hours. That is incorrect. And so if you only Why see is that the... incorrect? Because you don't actually see the sun for the full 24 hours. Says who? From my understanding in that video, they don't show the sun for a full 24 hours. Oh, I think he's referencing that Mr. Beast saw the sun for 24 hours. That's what I'm saying. They supposedly went down there and there's some video. They don't actually show the so sun. Mr. Beast is lying is your argument. Mr. Beast. This his man video hates just, Mr. Beast. Sorry. It's just weird that like you they're claiming that he went down there and saw the sun for 24 hours. But the truth is they didn't actually see the sun itself for 24 hours. Yes, there is sunlight for 24 hours. And I even mentioned I know a former NASA employee that was stationed there for six months during their summer, I said, you do not see the sun for 24 hours. So just claiming he said something doesn't mean anything. I don't even know if he actually said they probably didn't. Person's being disingenuous about the actual video, if it seems like so. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Compton, the fourth or four, 
$5. Mr. Sensible showed curvature with the Mage Project. Why do you lie, Witsit? Uh, say it again. Mr. Sensible showed curvature with the Mage Project. Why do you lie, Witsit? Yes, yes. He claimed to show curvature on a balloon, right? So if that's true, we're going to have to throw out for one, Neil deGrasse Tyson and other scientists on your side that claim you wouldn't see it from 60 miles. Let's just throw them out. The math's not agreed upon. That's what I'm saying. Anti-flat earthers make different math than the scientists they say we're so stupid for not believing. They throw the mainstream scientists under the bus. But anyway, of course, he actually showed that you, when you use a lens and based on the angle of view, that it'll look like things are curving, just like it can look like things are curving up. Right. So in these videos of the balloons where it looks like it's curving and then it tilts up, it looks like the earth is concave. That's just what lenses do. And they claim that, oh, a rectilinear lens doesn't have any curvature. That is objectively not true. There isn't a lens that exists in all of existence that doesn't impose curvature and distortion. So when it actually levels out, you can see that, that, that it's a flat and rising towards eye level. And that's a globe problem. Curvature on a lens does not mean so, what the lens is. We're, we're in speed in mode. We're just going to go. We're speed just mode. Go. Okay. <laughs> Trust me. It's for the best. Brutally honest, 11 pounds. If Earth was flat, logically, the sun's rays would illuminate Earth's entire disk, not parts. If flat, wouldn't at all... If flat, wouldn't all the countries be experiencing same daylight hours as all the same time? What's flat Earth rebuttal? Uh, man, this is like the first day. Okay, if you have a smaller local light source as the sun, it would not illuminate the entire surface at the same time. Just take a flashlight on your phone, move it towards your desk, and you'll see that it doesn't light the whole desk up, right? So it's called light attenuation. So the absorption rate of light relative to the medium, and there's a radius of light relative to the actual source and divergence based on the proximity of the surface. So no, just... Literally take a flashlight, move it over your table and see the whole table doesn't light up and that that's a ridiculous straw man of the flat earth. That's like It doesn't light up, but you'd still be able to see it from different locations William, in the flat surface. Please. I, the questions for Witsit, and I really want to get through these super chats. So we're just not going to do any responses, okay? There's questions no for you, bro. Don't worry. Eris, um, 385 $5. Witsit, have you seen the flat earth debate between preachers Greg Locke and Dean Odell, do you think the Bible proves the earth is flat? Um, I did see the debate. I was on the front row in person. Um, I think it was kind of bad faith and pretty crazy. But uh, no, I don't think the Bible proves the flat earth. I think that that's not the way that you go about this discussion. Um, I do actually think the scriptures are true, but heavily manipulated. But that is not, that is no way made my decision or something. All it did was make, make me reevaluate the scriptures as uh, potentially valid and viable. But uh, no, I don't think that the Bible proves the earth is flat. I think that truth and the evidence of the earth just adds validity to the Bible. So maybe you would say it the other way around, but I don't think, I don't know really any flat earther that exists that claims that the reason they believe the earth is flat is because the Bible says so strictly. That isn't a real thing. Just people go back to the Bible once they find out. All right. Mott Mott sends 1499. What physics did the paper cited by Witsit use? Newtonian, Einsteinian, to show the equivalency of Tycho's Brea's and I... Joanna's Kepler's models of retrograde motion? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Tycho Brahe and Kepler. Um, they In that paper, he uses Newtonian mechanics. So it's called like the... Uh, neo tyconian newtonian machian analysis i mean yeah it's kind of a mouthful but uh, yeah using the machian principle and stuff like that but he used newtonian mechanics and of course just to clarify i'm not invoking the paper because i believe that you know the earth is in the center of the uni universe using newtonian mechanics i'm just showing that in your own belief system it's there's a dynamic equivalence of the earth being in a stationary and most people don't know that and they seem to not want to inform themselves about it but uh yeah it was newtonian uh, Maggie Marin, uh, Megan Mary spends a dollar ninety nine in support of William Flat Earth destroyed again. Um, mm -hmm. Antonio Ignez five dollars wits it. Why do airline flight paths rely on a globe Earth to optimize travel times slash costs? Oh man, if people assume that the Earth's a globe and then it's run through a, a globular transformation, and they would just go there. I mean, what's it meant? Well, I mean, honestly, why do planes not lead their path? 
like lead their target so they can save tons of money on gas that way. I mean, people are told the Ursa globe. People assume the Ursa globe. People navigate with magnetic declination corrections on a flat earth thinking that it's supposedly a globe. And that's all it is. Actually, tons of flights make way more sense on a flat earth. They would be way out of your way on a globe. Yeah, they go way out of their way to make the distance way longer on a globe. But then when you look at a flat earth, it's like the shortest path. So actually the opposite of that is true. All right. Jack Jazz Jacket, $2. I believe this is for you, William. Airplanes move with the earth, but not sniper bullets? Um, I do believe snipers do have to take Coriolis into effect. Not an expert at sniping. So I would highly encourage them. Um, Make sure you do more research on that. Can't give you the best answer for that. Ted Lacoca, dollar ninety nine. So why is down more powerful? What's it? There's a downward electric current on the Earth. It's ten micro microamps per square meter. So at any given time, there's an electric bias that's going down to the Earth. There's equipotential charge increasing, hundred volts per meter. This creates, of course, the Earth's surface is negatively charged up to four hundred thousand coulombs. That creates a downward electric current. Just sets the bias. It's it's pretty weak on a small scale overall. There's a lot of electric pressure coming from the sky. Radiant energy comes down to the Earth. It's provable. It's measurable. That's why we have a downward electric bias. Think seek, seek equilibrium relative to density and buoyancy after that thanks sir alice mcgee sends her first super chat to wits it why has no one reached the end of the flat earth or hit the wall we can sail right around the earth okay there's obviously something called the antarctic treaty which has had subsequent legislation since then anything past the 60th south latitude uh, you cannot freely and privately explore that area yes you can go on approved guided tours to like the tip of one of the quote-unquote islands or the edge of antarctica or whatever but uh you can't freely and privately explore out past the 60th south latitude or even towards the quote-unquote north pole either the north warning system's been in a place since 1957 uh international geophysical year so the answer is that you can't freely and privately explore there. They don't let you go. I know this for a fact. I reached out and tried to do it. I reached out and tried to get approval. I asked them what the prices were. I even tried to line up people that would pay the $250,000 permit fee. And there's all kinds of crazy fees. And they they do not, they will not let you go across Antarctica. So uh, that's why people haven't done it. It's it's literally not allowed. All right. Issa Kaber, $1.99. I am impressed by this debate. Great job, guys. Um, a nominal bear, five dollars. This, this is the best moderator. <laughs> Thank you so much. Also, wits it. Please explain to all that we see too far the math and how they use refraction as a scapegoat. Thank you. Yeah. So this is gonna sound almost robotic, but. I'm trying to save this time. So if the earth is a sphere with a radius of 3,959 miles, then the earth has to curve at a very specific rate. We can know where the curvature of the earth should be, which is the geometric horizon at 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height in feet. And we should that's where the physical curve of the earth should be in relation to how high you are above it. Uh, we see observations where like mountains are 273 miles away and should be miles below the curve of the earth, et cetera. We see way too far consistently. So what the globe says is, oh, well, the light's actually being bent around the globe, matching the rate of curvature of the globe to lift things up five miles vertically behind the curve to make it look like the earth is flat. Um, so yeah, basically refraction is just a reification fallacy. It's a mathematical assumption based on how much uh, curvature is missing. Sir, Brian Peck, $2. Ships use gyro compass, no magnetic declination. Okay. Uh, ships absolutely account for magnetic declination, my brother. So uh, I don't know if you knew that or not. But yes, they also can have a gyro compass on board. Uh, but they use magnetic declination to navigate. If you didn't, you would be in some trouble. All right. Ten Lakoka. Ted Lakoka, dollar ninety nine. Wits it? Could you be wrong? Uh, sure, sure. But uh, I would need actual physical empirical evidence. Right, right now my position is that the Earth is a stationary topographical plane, and that the Earth is in the center of the universe, and that's what all actual observable, empirical, measurable evidence says. Um, it's been pretty much definitively refuted. 
I would, I'm always open to potentially being wrong. I think anyone that isn't is super disingenuous, but uh, I think we've proven as flat earthers that we are because we all believe the earth was a globe and then had to admit that we were wrong. Um, so yeah, I, I don't see it. I'll be honest. I see the evidence as overwhelming and that the, the current model is physically impossible, but could I be wrong about some of my understandings of the earth? Sure. All right. I'm going to speed these up now. Get ready. Um, Scott with one T $2 will explain title nodes with the globe moon model. The globe. So you're talking about the waves and the title titles in the waves in the ocean, right? So that is a byproduct of the earth and the moon pulling on the earth and having the water be focused towards the direction of the moon that I would really suggest go back to my slide when you have the chance, rewind it, go look at the graphic I showed on the screen. It's a direct cause of gravity, for the moon's effect on the earth. All right, thank you. Uh, Sky Scion 499, William, do you have any exclusive evidence? Oh. Oh, did I accidentally go backwards here? Hold on. No, they probably asked the same question because it's one of mine on my, my slide. Like on okay. my my show, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So the Earth orbits around the sun. Yeah, I don't remember this Daniel Summer question. So William uh, William doesn't have any exclusive evidence the Earth orbits around the sun. No, the answer is no. You can never be a hundred certain about everything, right? What's it? The context is like exclusive, as in it can only be explained if the Earth is moving around the sun, not if the Earth is stationary. That's the context of the word exclusive, right? So and not a hundred percent exclusive then. Yeah, that's we've a, explored the question. We've already explored yeah, the question. Just a, it's a, a different from super chatter. Um, clearly, a, a, a fan. Uh, so uh, they can they can rewind and, and check the answer back there. Uh, Daniel Sumner, Summer, no Sumner. Yeah, I had it right. Ten dollars, Witsit. Please explain that while refraction can obscure objects that can be seen, but cannot make objects appear that are obstructed from view. So the very nature of refraction is it bends light. I'm pretty sure they, it's for Witsit. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, yeah, uh, though there's physical obstruction of uh, like something in the distance. You can't just claim that that actual physical location itself is going to disappear then reappear somewhere else. That's the major problem of it is uh, they actually invoke refraction to claim that the, the horizon is a physical place that's moving and then disappearing, et cetera. Um, so yeah, it's just a bit, it's just a baseless claim. I mean, yes, in theory, refraction Snell's law is about two medium light can bend quote unquote relative to different mediums. They're using a singular medium, using a density and temperature gradient and claiming it does it, but it's never been established in a lab setting. It's never been verified. It's literally just a mathematical construct. When someone wants to come show me the rate that they claim with the conditions that they claim and show it in a lab setting, then we can talk. Otherwise it's just, you know, it's a reification fallacy. All right, Church of the Flat Earth, four ninety nine, their first ever super. Will uh, so for Will from a cockpit, would stars appear to rise while you maintain level flight or move east slash west? Yeah, because you're going across the surface of the Earth. So yes, you would start seeing new stars as you change your location on the planet. Yes. All right, Lord Ra, five dollars. Wits it, you're the man. Um, and then. Uh, we'll, we'll, Will, you're a man too. I'm just going to skip. What's it? You're the man. <laughs> you said you're a man. <laughs> you're the, oh. I meant to say you're the man too, because the, the rest of the question kind of goes. Um, okay. I'm a he him. A little, yeah. Uh, in any case, that's not me. DMT business minded talk, $5. Globes have a nominal scale. What does a flat earth use? And please explain it on your own map. I don't claim a map bro so if they lied about the earth every time the model under attack is tragic the tactic is to ask where a map is if they lied about the earth what you even asking so i mean you know the king gave a decree in 76 you can't make a flat earth map uh you got to use the globe coordinate systems and so you can't even patent a map without using the presupposed global coordinate systems so uh yeah we can't freely and privately explore the earth to figure out exactly what the uh earth is or how to map it so all right, I can see the bottom, guys. We're almost there. So I'm going to take two seconds right now to remind everybody to hit that like, hit that subscribe button. We did not hit the 170,000. That would have been super exciting. Uh, but that's okay. I'm sure when I wake up tomorrow, it'll be 170,000. 
what's it William thank you so much this has been a great time we do have some more super chats we're not going anywhere yet I just wanted to take the time and let everybody know there is an after show if you're not over it if you're ready to go in even more at matters now there'll be an after show both you gentlemen are welcome over there um, moving on to our next super chat Daniel Subner ten dollars just contributing for wits it as an attaboy for keeping your cool and your humor great yeah, I'm a fanboy. Keep it up. <laughs> Thank you. Much love. Much love. T for $2. How did NASA create CGI image in 1976? I think that's for Witsit. That's for Witsit. When you get a moment. Sorry, I'm trying to get my charger. I guess that's for me because people are like, oh, how they have. Yeah, okay. So they had big models that they made of the Earth and of the Moon. Admittedly, they could just take pictures of models. They didn't even have to have CGI. Not to mention that you can actually see baked like Photoshop, et cetera, all the way in the early 1800s. People used to actually sell spirit photography where they would they would overlap in black rooms or uh, like the photo development rooms and make it look like their spirit of their relative was there. Photoshop isn't a new thing, but you could just make giant models and take pictures of them, which is what they did because you can actually find the pictures of NASA's giant moon models with the actual texture and all of that. So they could just do the same thing for the earth. You wouldn't need, quote unquote, cgi and they also if you ever seen a funny thing happen on the way to the moon we actually saw the quote-unquote astronauts in the quote-unquote spaceship faking the earth from just not low much lower altitude trying to make it look like a globe through the window using a circular window so that's not suspect at all so anyway yeah you can fake it many different ways alexander rin 499 if gravity doesn't affect gas what does it affect why not gas That's for you, Witsit. I, I, I think that's for Witsit, yeah. What? No, it's uh, that if gravity allegedly were true, we can tell with empirical evidence it clearly wouldn't be strong enough to prevent gas from escaping in all directions because where gravity supposedly is the strongest at the surface, gas will still immediately and violently fill the available space of a vacuum. So you could not have, quote unquote, gravity holding it down as we can test the claim on the Earth and prove it violates the second law of thermodynamics. So that's the actual point that keeps getting skated past. All right. Nominal sends $2 super chat for a previous super chat from T who says 1972. So I think they got the date wrong of the CGI image of 1976. They're correcting with 1972. It's the first time I've gotten a super chat for another super chatter. Um, <laughs> That's pretty funny. AP 499. And they say both sides. Can you list your points that do not assume globe or flat, but still work either way? So um, I'll give you guys both uh, like 30 seconds to answer this. Uh, go ahead, William, first. Yeah, so I would just reiterate, look over my whole presentation. My presentation wasn't about proving globe. My presentation was about proving the predictability of each theory, trying to give each theory the accurate prediction that it would give and then compare it to what is being observed. Um, best argument, stellar movement across the sky. What's it, your turn? I guess, can you list things that would work on both models? And it's like kind of like a, this litmus test of honesty or whatever. But yeah, like uh, you could say that the way that the planets move, right? You could say the way that the sun moves and the way that it explains on flat earth is the azimuthal grid of uh, vision, right? So you have an apparent location of the sun. You can replicate this, take a light over the dome. You'll see it displaced, you know, actually go in an arc, even if you put it in a circle. So it physically can demonstrate exactly what we see in the sky with stellar motion. But um, yeah, what could work on both? I mean, you could claim things like the position, like optical positions of planets and stuff, because that's how we made the globe. Um, yeah, it's the physical measurements that don't work. And there's there's quite a few things that you could say would work on both, right? A lot of things go in the both basket. Okay. Uh, Sean six 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 cents two dollars. Toby Walker ten dollars. Why did you dot Witsit's question about the uniform vertical electric field? How are the lines <laughs> e equip? Potential gradient lines parallel on a sphere? I forgive my wording. I'm so happy someone brought that up again. Yes, an atmosphere absolutely can act as an effective plane of conductive energy. So yes, an atmosphere can act as a plane if that's the claim you're trying to make. Thank you. Yeah, let's go quick because there's more super chats coming in. Uh, Wizit, please explain analema. Analema? 
Yeah, the analema. Yeah, it's it's just like you can look at it with a time lapse. The sun just changes its position throughout the year as an ecliptic plane. And so it creates like basically a, a kind of like elongated figure eight in the sky. They claim that even though the sun looks like it's moving and looks like it's changing its position throughout the year, it's an illusion. And we're tilted, wobbling four different ways, flying through space, even though that's been debunked. So it's just a kinematic equivalence. It's bit, but the analema actually probably impossible on their model, but yeah, it's just the sun changing throughout the year and, you know, changing its position on its ecliptic plane. All right. Church of the Flat Earth, 499. William from a cockpit at 30,000 feet flying straight and level for one hour with the stars appear to rise and go around the curve or side to side. Around the, well, around the curve or side to side. I So flying at 30,000 feet straight and level for one hour with the stars appear to rise as you go around the curve or side to side. If you're going in a straight direction on a curved planet, you're going to see stars rise across your field of vision so rise all right alexander wren 999 originally we used information gathered from a lunar eclipse in ancient greece more recently we used the laser reflection from the mirrors placed on the moon during the apollo 11 mission not sure that's really a question um i saw what's it kind of shake his head and we'll count that as the answer and move on um yeah Pro proud flur 499 william has yet to address what's it's one point to vertical gradient of e man these words, equipotential man. thank you sir equipotential energy hashtag level heads uh i think i kind of referenced it back where the guy asked about the gradient the um current going into the earth when i said that an atmosphere absolutely can effectively be used as a plane of charge an atmosphere can it doesn't have to be a physical plane does it have to be an it doesn't have to be a solid. It can be a gas that acts as a electrically charged plane. Plane is a geometry term. It doesn't have to be a solid. Oh. Right. Um, I think we're getting into like what's its. Uh, it's all good. It's here. all good. Yeah, it's awesome. It's great. The support we get from uh, our viewers is great. Uh, clouds create or thoughts create four ninety nine. William, clouds appear to merge into the horizon. Are they following the curve of the Earth? If not, why do they appear to do so? Um, clouds appear to merge into the horizon. Yes, they go across the horizon and onto the other side of the, onto a side of the Earth you can't see. Um, if you really want to talk about strange optical observations you see at the very edge of the horizon, you have to understand how refraction affects light in air on a planet. It can change depending on the weather, especially the temperature. It completely changes the refraction index of the air, and it can make light act in funky ways. Thank you. Uh, C. Davis, 912-499. Um, there's a part of this question, William. Uh, feel free to decline to answer, okay? Um, hey, thanks for the debate. Wits it. Love your stuff. Question to William. Do you believe in God? Oh, God, I don't know if I want to out myself, um, but I like guess... I said, you're free to decline the answer. I mean, I, That is I feel, not the topic of debate that's kind yeah, of personal technically at this stage. Yeah, I feel like I... I'll not answer that question. All right. Lights for Angels, $5. William, can you explain why a helium balloon floats using the current model of gravity and not density or buoyancy? Little g equals acceleration? Hmm. No, <laughs> a balloon floating up is because of buoyancy. So no, I can't describe it without buoyancy because that's what the phenomenon is. Mike Token, 999 to William. How does, this, how does the same face of the moon stay locked on a spinning ball? Please explain why the pulling force of the sun's gravity doesn't pull the moon's face away from the ball. Yes, so gravity doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be uniform over all sides of a globe. One side can have a more gravitational pull than the other. When you're orbiting a planet, the one side that's going to be attracted to it more will be the one that faces the thing it's orbiting. Thank you, sir. Tristan Arnold, 499, wits it. May the creator bless you for the intensively seeking and sharing the truth. No problem. Thank you for support. Mott Mott sends 698. 
Let's just wait for Elon to send us to Mars. By the way, what happened to my other super chat? Um, sorry if I missed it, Mott Mott. I can quickly scroll back after um, and see if I missed it. Uh, did you by chance maybe say something in there I chose not to read? <laughs> um, Malario199, can, can you use telescope in San Diego and see Hawaii? No, dude. If you think you should be able to see across the entire Earth, you still don't understand the first part of a plain Earth. So, Christo Foros, two dollars. Isaiah four twenty two forty twenty two says the Earth is a circle. It does yes, and it uses a different Hebrew word for ball, right? Four after that, so yeah, circle. He says he drew a circle on the face of the Earth. So show me a flat circle on the face of a sphere. Uh, you don't have a face, so yeah. He uses a different he, Isaiah uses a different Hebrew word for ball. In the same exact. Um, all right, thank you. I'm going to read this next one more like a comment because we've explored it twice already. Mercedes F1 fan 299. Mr. Beast went to Antarctica, showed sun never sets. He didn't show the sun in the video. Why are you guys lying? Maybe we'll have to check it out, I guess. Yeah. Um, the science of science, $5 tip to the mod. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> um, Eric Robinson, $2. Wits it. Are you related? Oh, mm. All right, you're you're a fun guy. You'll like this. This one's probably all right. What's it? Are you related to Bill Burr? <laughs> no. Oh, that's funny. I don't think so. You do look like him. Um, and ninety nine percent God five dollars. Oh, proof of people upright, antipodal on the bottom of the ball from a viewpoint outside of the ball. There is proof of people upright, which is all flat Earth requires. Is okay. that to me or you? I don't, I don't think that was really a question. I think that was a statement about their position. Um, Wes Flatter, $2. Austin Freestyle. Megan Mary, one ninety nine. Just wanted to say love MDD. Did it just say Austin uh, Freestyle? It says Austin Freestyle. Are you going to do okay? it? All right, all right, check it. Ready? Do it, it man. All right. Oh, they want you to freestyle. Break it down. A thing you it's do. not going to be a freestyle, though, but better oh. than veteran. Don't want to let him in. Ain't got a choice but to let him in. I feel it in the ether. It's coming through the speakers. You're talking to see me speak it, but you're not about it. I believe I'm confounded. With thoughts are profound, so deep do they drown. And I wonder what sound is a perturbation, reverberation. I heard to hate, and I swear to fake, and absurd debate, and people still stuck in the matrix station waiting for stations to say it, take it, debate it, regurgitate it. Hey. Amazing. Okay. Um, if I would try that, I would trip on my face. Yeah. Is it written? Uh, yeah, sweet. Um, Megan Mary, uh, one ninety nine says, just wanted to say I love MDD. Well, MDD loves you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Matters now two dollars after show on Matters now will begin soon. They've probably already started. Um, John Malolia, uh, if you guys are still here when this stream ends, you'll be redirected over there automatically, so you don't have to miss anything. Uh, John Malola, two dollars for for both. So let's do this one quick. For Na uh, was NASA's moon landing faked, William? Hell no. What's it? What what was the moon landing faked? Of course. All right. Randy oh Cardi gosh. 499. What why can we see the moon in the day if the moon is supposed to be in the other side of the earth in the globe model? This is a very good question. Um the girl the earth the the moon is not always on the opposite side of the sun in the globe model. The best example of that is the solar eclipse, where the moon actually eclipses the sun at the exact same point in in the optical space. So, no, it's not always on the same side. All right, so people sending some some bigger, they're spending more bigger amounts of money. Wow, they're still here. sending them in. Yeah. The uh, Church of the Flat Earth, $1.99. White stars don't appear rise from cockpit flat 100. They said wit. He wanted me to say, he set you up like three questions about like, does it do it? We I have time, that, yeah. time lapse of the planes that show that they don't move off the way they should. And when I ask left or right, it's because supposedly there's this ideal rotation. So if you're flying like say Southwest, Northeast, different directions, mm -hmm. you should see them also move to the side, right? Cause they're supposedly spinning in relation to the globe. And then in relation to which way you're going with the curvature of the earth dropping, they're also going to rise that way. And that this time lapse of the planes uh, don't actually show what's predicted by the globe. So, what well, am I missing like a lot of super chats? Is that what you're trying to say? Or 
No, I'm saying like, no, I'm saying no. that like the question's yeah. been given to William like two or three times. It's the oh. same guy that was kind of like yeah. setting him up. But yeah. Yeah, I see. I And I understand where I went wrong with my reasoning where I answered that. I did not take into account the motion of the earth. And you're right. If the earth is motion moving, then I have to ask a couple more questions to make sure I get it. Get it gets pretty answer. complex because it's like it's like compounding vectors, right? So, yes, correct. Uh, Yaden, $20. Why is it that people in Southern Australia can't see Polaris due to the distance, but two people in Cape Town and Tasmania respectively can both see the Southern Cross without any issue while someone in San Francisco can't? Um, because they're closer. So you can't see forever. I don't know why people think you can. Things just uh, things in the sky go down, the ground ramps up until it reaches like the optical limit. And actually, it's curved visual space. And one thing I will point out about the Southern Star Trails, which I find very interesting, is everyone thinks they claim that they can see them all see the Southern Cross from these continents all looking south. Uh, no, they're not looking south. We'll actually, look at the observations. They look like southwest. They look at different uh, elevation angles and different directions. They don't all look the same directly south. That's not true. And in fact, the way that they get their cardinal direction is by making magnetic declination corrections, right? Which is just whatever they claim it is in the south. So you could think they're looking opposite directions make because you made a huge correction because in the south it gets crazy when actually they're not. So anyway, yeah, you can't see forever on a flat earth. It isn't complicated, man. Lights for Angels, $20. William, we can make objects float using electrostatics. Do the same with gravity. Hint, you can't because it doesn't exist. Density, buoyancy, electrostatics. That's all we need, not gravity. Ha ha, Nelson's voice. I think well, they're trying to do Simpsons impression there. Um, I think they're just arguing against your answer from previously. If you want to respond, feel free. Yeah. Um, if you want to try to say, I should be able to use gravitation to make things levitate, that is not true. Gravitation is inherently an attractive force. Um, so no, that wouldn't apply to my argument. But yes, static electricity can apply a different force in addition to gravity on in certain situations, like rubbing a balloon on your head. All right. Scott with one T, five bucks. Explain how the current time from sunset to darkness is equal right now, both north and south of the equator, despite being opposite seasonally. I think that's for what's it. Yeah, they're actually not. So actually the twilight, twilight is longer in the south. I mean, it's shorter in the south. So you guys tell me on the globe when it should be symmetrical meaning that there's just a globe with a certain size turning, giving us day and night. That means six months apart, right, on the opposite sides of the earth that we should have the same twilights, but we don't. They're shorter in the south, which makes perfect sense on a plane earth because the sun would have to be going a little faster, tangential velocity, not angular speed, right, in the south to cover more ground. And it literally shows, it literally is the twilight is shorter there. Uh, that is physically impossible on a globe. They should be symmetrical um, based on the geometric claim. So... Yeah, I'm not sure if that's exactly what he asked. It doesn't matter. That's good news. Look, I can't scroll down anymore. We're at the bottom of the list. Nice. Daniel Subner, five dollars at William. I have seen more evidence that we see the same sunspots. Are we tidally locked to the sun also? No, the sun. The sun spins. You can observe the sun spinning. Look up the observation of the sun spinning. You can see all sides of the sun as we rotate around it. Orbit around it. Sorry. Um, John Malaya, five dollars. Flat Earth Dave, not want to debate MC Tune. Why not, Austin? Uh, because he's proven himself to be. I hate to have to do this, but kind of bad faith. I'll just be. I'll be polite about it, right? And yeah, he, just be polite that, about it. Dave's perspective is that he isn't in, he isn't debating this in good faith. And so he's decided to not debate people that kind of like make a living off of hating on alternative cosmology and ridiculing people. Are you talking so about that, Professor Dave? No, yeah. no. Uh, like Flat Earth Dave, Dave Weiss. Um, yeah, he won't debate McToon, which is like an anti-Flat Earth guy. He won't de debate MC Toon. Um, but yeah, Dave just doesn't want to do that anymore. He doesn't want to get in toxic debates where he thinks the other person's bad faith. So that's his own prerogative. I don't blame him. I don't debate. I don't debate MC2 anymore. Not because of that as much that I debate him plenty of times. It's over. So anyway, to each their own. Yep. I agree. Run Boston bear 499 last super chat. Thanks everyone. Last chance for likes and subs. 
Um, I'll be heading over to At Matters now for the after show. You all should as well. Uh, William and Witsit, you would be welcomed over there with open arms. People would get kicked out of the kicked out to allow space for you too. I can promise that. <laughs> so, um, William and Witsit. Oh crap! I should have just ended it when I had a chance. We had another super chat while I said that. <laughs> William and Witsit, what prompted Albert Einstein to derive special relativity? William, go ahead first. Different observations he made, such as the bending of light around massive objects. And what's it? That's that's incorrect. Uh, that's Arthur Eddington experiment, and that is general relativity, the bending, right, where there is no curvature of space-time and special relativity. But in 1905, he proposed that because of the 1887 Mengelson-Morley experiment. You had to say the apparatus contracted uh, to compensate just a sufficient amount for the missing time difference that would have been predicted. This is going to be fast, sorry, based on the assumed orbital speed of the Earth, and that wasn't observed. So very simply, Newtonian mechanics says the object's going to move in a straight path unless an outside force acts upon it. So if the Earth's curving around the sun, there must be an outside force acting upon the Earth, curving it. But the, we didn't detect the circular motion with interferometry, which you would probably be able to do. So Einstein saved the day, came up with a new theory to keep the orbit claim by saying we're actually going straight in our orbit and we're not curving and we're free falling. And that's why you weren't able to detect it. And he had to contract the apparatus and then say time slows down and all this other stuff. So uh, Einstein himself said that the reason he came up with special relativity was because of the Michael Samorley experiment and like experiments proving that the earth doesn't orbit unless we change physics. All right. Last question. Even if one comes in, uh, we're, we're going to, we're going to bugger out of here. Um, Yaden $10. Uh, so this was the earlier San Francisco question. San Francisco is between those two, apparently on a flat earth, but can't see the Southern cross, but they do and can't see Polaris due to distance even though they are the most far on flat earth. What? Are you, are you... Um, I th so right. if we, I can't recall perfectly the other question, but it was Some something Hawaii. about from San Diego to yeah, Hawaii. Hawaii. Can we see Hawaii from San Diego with a telescope? Um, no, this was the Southern Cross thing with San Francisco and someone in Australia, but then Tasmania seeing the Southern Cross. Uh, this person is re-adding here that San Francisco is between those two, apparently on a flat earth. Um, so they're supposing you have a flat earth map. So they're saying that San Francisco is between those two, apparently on a flat earth, but they can't see the Southern Cross. But they both do and can't see Polaris due to their distance, even though they are the most far apart on flat earth. Okay, I'm just, I, I've already, like, they can't see Polaris when you get a certain uh, distance south, right? When you get far enough south, you can start to see the Southern Cross, right? I don't, I, I don't actually understand what the uh, question is even asking, to be honest, so. Yeah. Uh, I, would need, I would need to hear it all incoherently. It's whatever, but I, I guarantee you it's not, it's not like some death blow, but maybe right. it's the one, dude. Email <laughs> it to me. Maybe it's the one. <laughs> maybe. Um, no look, others. this, this is uh, objectively in the top two of all modern day debates for 2024. Um, that's a fact. There's no dis, 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 disproving that. Um, but for me personally, I think this sets a, a bar for the year. I think if uh, 2024, if we could have debates like this all the time, it'd be amazing. So I wanna thank you both so much uh, for the great time and for hanging out with me uh, for over three hours. Good grief. That's my Charlie Brown of the day. So uh, what's it gets it, thank you. Uh, William Harris, thank you. I'm heading over to App Matters now. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us and watching us. You've got one more chance to hit like and subscribe. Have a great night. Peace.